episode of Video Game Logic. Today's show was recorded on June the 26th, 2018. I'm your host, the company man with a plan, gaming psychologist. And with me, as always, the con artist with an impeccable sense of hats, Caffeine Rage. On today's show, we're going to be having our Game Club episode for the month of June, and we're going to be starting with that due to potential time constraints. We're going to be having our Game Club discussion on Tales from the Borderlands, we will reveal our next Game Club game. We will have one guaranteed piece of news. Telltale is reportedly finally ditching its old engine. If there's time, we'll discuss the games that we played, our weekly community corner, and a Steam weekly discovery queue. Timestamps will be in the show notes following their respective topics. Hello, Rage. Hello. How are you today? Uh, doing all right. Uh, you seem to be, uh, think that we're going to be very pressed for time this week. Do you have a lot to well, say I don't, about this? I don't know how long it's going to take us to do the beat by beat of the story, like we do for these games. And wait, are know, we including the uh, quick time events? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, we'll talk about them. But <laughs> oh, but you know, I, 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 I'm not going to underestimate how long we can bullshit about something. So uh, first time for everything, I guess. Because, I mean, when we did the uh, Life is Strange one, that was like a four-hour episode. Yeah, but we enjoyed Life is Strange. When we did... Well, I enjoyed Tales from the Borderlands. I have thoughts about this game, so yeah. (laughs) Yeah, and when we did uh, Wolf Among Us, that was like a two-hour run-through of the game. Yeah, but that was also a lot more story. It was a lot more story-based. So I just want to make sure I cover my bases, because I do have to be at work counseling people in the morning so unfortunately i can't stay here all night yeah you gotta get your rest for chihuahua lady i do chihuahua lady is on my caseload uh i probably won't be seeing her until probably two weeks from now um i could go pull her chart and find out for sure but typically it's two (laughs) weeks after their first appointment uh or their intake appointment is when they get a counseling session i just had a thought and i need to share this all right you pull her chart and it's just this long, long, long sheet of paper that she keeps on going off into the horizon. <laughs> you know the well, you know the cartoon. You get the roll of paper and you uh, you know start to unroll it and it drops to the floor and then it just starts rolling off. You know our office is trying to uh, go paperless. This is probably why her chart was just too much paper. <laughs> It was all of the paper, and they're like, "We gotta." Uh, this lady gotta is cut down uh, this budget. This lady is responsible solely for the decimation of the Amazon rainforest. Indeed, it, it's not the cows; Indeed. it's just the paper to keep up with her. To keep up with Chihuahua Lady. <laughs> oh God, what a what a fun and wondrous job I have. Sometimes it gets silly. Sometimes, oftentimes it gets wacky. Occasionally, a fight breaks out. Not not this week, but there there have been a couple of fights since I've been there. One fight was with the staff between two caseworkers. Still don't know why that fight happened, but yeah, one of those ladies got fired. Oh, really? Yep. The one who started the fight. But uh, yeah, that's a, a story for another time, perhaps. Like a an, another bonus or bullshit episode. I could compile a list of all of the stories from work and tell them. Uh, That'll be your solo bullshit episode. Uh, Tales from the Counselor. (laughs) It would certainly be more in-depth storytelling than Tales from the Borderlands. Oh, sick burn. Damn. So, yeah, let's uh, let's just go ahead and dive on in into Tales from the Borderlands. We'll do a little bit of uh, overview stuff first. But, Rage, in case someone's listening to us for the first time, and uh, doesn't know what Game Club is, why don't you tell them what our Game Club is? Well, the Game Club is our monthly little get-together between the two of us, and if anybody sends it in, our listeners, where we all play the same game, to try to get together on our divergent tastes. This will be heavily spoilerific, and we'll talk about the mechanics of the game uh, when appropriate, uh, the story when appropriate, or in this case, not appropriate. (laughs) And just really what we think in depth. Uh, Usually a lot more in depth than what we uh, 
ever cover otherwise. <laughs> yeah. And we typically have different tastes in games, so this is a way for us to uh, see where we diverge or converge on the same game. Because we, I mean, we sometimes play the same game when we do the games we played section, but more often than not, we have two very different lists of games that we played for that week. So, without further ado, let's talk about Tales from the Borderlands. Um, So, this is the third one of these type of games that we've done on the show for Game Club. How do you feel it stacks up compared to Life is Strange and Wolf Among Us, just in general terms? Uh, Very distant third. Yeah. Th- this yeah. is by far the weakest one of these that we've done. In- but then again, that's really not fair to Tales of the Borderlands because Life is Strange is hailed as one of the best uh, point and cl- Not even point and click, but the Telltale style of uh, episodic storytelling. Uh, yeah. And then... Uh, uh, the Wolf Among Us is, it's between that and Walking Dead for the best of Telltale, depending on really if you like The Walking Dead. Yeah. Yeah, but most people, most critics seem to think, and I, I think I would agree with this based on all the Telltale games that I've played, that Wolf Among Us is their best uh, storytelling venture. Um, the other games, based on whatever franchise it is that you're, you know, that the game is based around kind of will determine how much you like it. Uh, but this is the most different of the Telltale games that I've played from a storytelling and and gameplay perspective. This game uses a lot of unreliable narrator techniques. Yeah, which that I actually um, liked. I did too. It's also a lot more jokey um, than any of the other games that I've played uh, from the, you know, from Telltale. Sometimes the jokes succeed, sometimes they fall flat on their face, but I'm pretty positive that's because this is a Borderlands, or a Borderlands universe game, which has, you know, tons of satire and parody and also just stupid, dumb humor in it. And a lot of um, Easter eggs, uh, you know, things. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, you know, uh, bashing you over the head with them, and sometimes they're very subtle. I, I really appreciate it more when they're subtle about it, and that was more what they lean towards uh, in this game which made me appreciate it a bit more than most of the borderlands games i played yeah uh but yeah uh, sort of like uh to give you an example is uh in the ending sequence there's a very strong either uh, it's either thundercats or power rangers depending on i think your age uh reference uh but then uh, to give you an idea of a more subtle one is that when you're scanning various things, which that's a mechanic that we'll get to in a bit, uh, they'll talk about the planes, trains, and automobiles division. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I saw that one. Um, I laughed at that. And some of the other scan jokes that they threw in, particularly when you have Handsome Jack inside and it goes from the encyclopedia to the Jackopedia. I uh, see. I didn't catch that, but then again, uh, uh, towards the middle, I kind of forgot about it because I did this game in about two days. Yeah, same, same. We had all this time to play it, and both of us waited until the last minute. And well, then I, I had, had things to go that, down, so you know, I had to, yeah, I did. Go ahead. Oh, well, I, I was in the process of moving, so that's why we did a short game anyway. Uh, yeah. And it took me about two weeks to fully move. And that was just because I have issues with my back and leg. Uh, so, you know, it would, I would take a couple of boxes, rest, I'd take a couple of boxes, rest, throw out my back, uh, be uh, immobilized for a day or two. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. And I intended to save this until, you know, the last week on purpose because Katie was going on a trip uh, to go visit some old friends for that week. So I was going to have more time to play games. But. I wound up uh, at work extra, uh, not like super late, but just long enough that by the time I got home every day, I was a little more tired. And then I made sure to do stuff around the house so that when the weekend came, I wouldn't have to do anything. And then I was like, okay, I'll just play it a whole bunch on Saturday. And then I didn't get to play any at all on Saturday just because I had some stuff that came up. Like nothing like crazy, but I had to get out of the house when I wasn't intending to and some other stuff. So I didn't get to play on Saturday. So I was well, At least like, the oh, power didn't Jesus. go out. Yeah, at least the power didn't go out, which it did uh, last night, which is Monday night uh, or Monday afternoon. I got a notification from my alarm, like my my home alarm gives me like emergency weather updates and like if the power goes out and stuff like that. And I got 
a notification at around 1, 12.30 or 1, that the power went out. And I was like, oh, must be that storm that blew through. And then a couple hours later, I hadn't been notified that the power had came back on. The power was out for like seven or eight hours. Fortunately, by the time my kid was in bed, the power had came back on. So I was like, oh, good. I'll get to finish or play the last chapter and a half tonight. Yeah, I did so. uh, two chapters well, Sunday. Oh, actually, uh, my days were weird over the weekend to begin with. So technically, I did three chapters in Sunday. But it was still my Saturday because, you know, just odd hours. So yeah. I did a chapter Saturday, two Sunday, and two Monday. Yeah, I did one Friday, two and a half Sunday, and one and a half Monday. Which, since I didn't have the Steam version, I actually got this uh, through Twitch Prom. I didn't have my uh, counter to be able to tell me exactly how long I've been playing, and I didn't even think about it until I was about halfway through the game, so I don't know how long the game is overall for me. It took me about 12 hours to play, and I checked the how long to beat, and 12 hours is most people's average. Yeah. It looked like you could speed through it, I assume, if you didn't like scan anything and like just press dialogue choices as fast as possible. You could get through it in about 8 hours. Um, and then the completionist run is something like 20. I guess that's finding all the Easter eggs and stuff like that. Doing all the random bullshit. Yeah, so I mean, that's pretty standard for these Telltale games. Um, I played Wolf Among Us. I think it took me about 10 or 12 hours to play through it. Um, Although I've played through Wolf Among Us twice, so it says I've played for 20 hours. So yeah, probably about 10 hours for that playthrough. Um, Yeah, but... uh, strange. Yeah, but Tales from the Borderlands, it also... Well, you could tell it's a Borderlands game because it has padding. (laughs) <laughs> and yeah, there's, there's a, a little padding. and there's a little unsatisfactory on the ending but we'll get to that yeah so some other things that this has done differently than these other telltale cell games that i've played or modern telltale uh there's two protagonists that you control um yeah it bounces and, back and forth between them at certain points yeah and sometimes like the times that i like it the most is when you're both in the same scene and you're making decisions for both characters you know in in roughly real time. Um, mm-hmm. I, I liked it less when it was like, let's spend 20 minutes with one character. Uh, the, the two main characters are Reese and Fiona. Uh, and so, you know, I, I disliked it when it's like, let's spend 20 minutes with Reese and then 20 minutes with Fiona. And like, you know, it's just a storytelling thing. Like, I think that's more personal preference. I don't feel like the game really suffered because of it, but I did enjoy it when they were in the same scene together. Well, they play off, off of each yeah. other. I was about to say they play off of each other really well. Because yeah. Reese is this really, really overly self-confident uh, douchebag. Yeah, he he starts out that way. He's yeah, he does he, grow. Character uh, growth. Yeah, which uh, there is two major time skips. Uh, one at the beginning of episode two, three. Uh, I think it's episode two because at the end of episode one is when you find the. The Atlas facility under the arena. Oh, okay, like, then, an epi- then the beginning of episode three, because uh, it's uh, uh, when you're going to go get the parts that there's a time skip uh, in the uh, yeah, intro. You have, and yeah. then there's the major time skip, because this is a good portion of this game is actually told uh, uh, by the two protagonists after the fact, while they're being held by gunpoint by a masked stranger demanding to know what happened yeah the first four chapters um there's a little bit of the storytelling that happens in real you know in real time but most of it is uh you know flashbacks via storytelling yeah which um from the two main characters as they're telling the 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 stranger the masked stranger yeah which offers a a lot of opportunities for Un, uh, reliable narrators and then playing off one at each other trying to one up each other in the story and the Masked Stranger saying, wait, you died? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you died? That's what you're going to go with? <laughs> it's like, well, we didn't die per se. Yeah, and I think like, that... want to try again? Yeah, I think that was the uh, best part of it was the unre- unreliable narrators. You don't really see a lot of that in games to begin with, or at least done well. Yeah. Uh, the, the other and- one I could really think of is Gunslinger. 
Call of War Res yeah. Gunslinger does an uh, unreliable narrator extremely well. I, I think better than this, but that's probably because I like Gunslinger a hell of a lot more than this. Yeah, and the first time that it really happens, uh, unless you manage to die, uh, which I didn't die before the first unreliable narrator reveal in the story, so, you know, I, I got this fresh. Like, the first time it happens, you kind of believe that this is what, like, you know, actually happened because it's a Borderlands game. And so, you know, over the top, you know, ridiculousness in, in both its storytelling and its uh, characters is par for the course. So Reese is like going into this big speech to try and convince the guy to give you a vault key, which we'll explain that a little bit more in a minute when we start going through the story. Also, we took but the same like, choice. Yeah. But, uh, but like, you know, the background changes and he like goes into epic speech mode. And then Fiona's like, no, that's not what happened. You're begging. And, you know, like, it, <laughs> She's like, you were begging, and they're, like, fighting over the case, and he's on his knees, like, please give it to me. And But, you know, like, you totally buy it if you've played the Borderland games. And then it's like, oh, they're going to do some unreliable narrator stuff with this, maybe. This is interesting. So, well, I later think it, on, like, well, when it happens, you can notice it a little bit sooner, but it's still great every time. Well, I think if you took the other choice, which I looked into some of these choices, you would have realized immediately that there was an unreliable narrator, and... It, take the one that we took the uh, blow his bond was a lot better because yeah. uh break his heart uh fatality essentially he ripped his heart out <laughs> okay i'm assuming he uses robot arm to rip his heart out uh i'm not 100 percent certain on that but this is reese so most likely not i mean it took yeah, him four it's... episodes to realize maybe you shouldn't uh, be punching with the fleshy arm yeah, maybe Which, you uh, Reese has arm. a robotic arm, and he also has a robotic eye and some cybernetics as well. He's a cyborg boy. Yep. And that comes into play uh, very much uh, throughout the game. Yep. Uh, is he the most uh, cybernetic heavy uh, character that we've seen in the Borderlands? I mean, I um, know we've seen characters with robotic arms and, uh, and the such, but... Not to the degree of Reese that I could recall off the top of my head. Granted, I only Isn't, really played uh, Borderlands 2. I played a bit of 1, but never got far into it. No, there's in Borderlands 1, there's not really a cybernetic character. Um, I know the... Uh, per, in Borderlands uh, 2, the Mechnomancer, well, I think she has cybernetic implants. And that's how she controls the mech. Yeah, but she also, uh, if memory serves correctly, she's not from uh, Pandora to begin with. Or granted, Reese isn't either, but... Uh, Reese is also part of Hyperion, so, you know, it makes sense for him to have him. Yeah. Uh, I know, uh, I can't think of the name of that professor, uh, uh, the one that helps you partway through the uh, uh, campaign, and there's a DLC where you're essentially on a safari with them. Oh, um, um you know, shit, I know you're talking about, but I can't think of his name either. He, But he's got a robotic arm yeah, I think, or leg. Yeah, I think he may have an arm, but I can't remember. So he uh, may be in the run for the money, but, uh, you know. Uh, He's the posh English guy, though, isn't he? Yeah, the extremely like gay the one. Saf- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is the most cybernetics we've seen. Or if not, then very First. close to it. Yeah. And they're used really well, too, I think, for storytelling purposes. The uh, So the eye is called an echo eye, and you can use it to scan things. And it comes into play a few times in the story, like specifically you'll scan something to hack it or something like that. But in general, that mechanic gets lost partway through the game. Yeah, uh, um, yeah, it's really used heavily in the first episode or two, then it drops off and then it becomes a little bit more important towards the end uh, in episode five. But not really. It's only for a couple of things. Yeah. And then the cybernetic arm gets... Uh, referenced a few times and uh yeah it's used like as some, uh, like, kind of a brick joke at one point yeah uh, i mean uh, we already mentioned it that he likes to punch but he punches with the arm that does the least damage yeah <laughs> um then there's one scene where he's trying to climb something and he's like robot arm stronger than real arm yeah and the the qte for that like or the button mashing is much easier with the the robot arm than his regular arm which I thought that was clever, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, and Fiona really doesn't have a lot going for her. She uh, is kind of a smart ass, and uh, 
uh, will scam uh, pretty much anyone out of their money. And her big thing is that she racks up a bank account. Ooh. Yeah, which you can use the money to buy various things throughout the story. Various things throughout this story. I don't really think that they make any difference aside from pure cosmetic value. Uh, But I spent Uh, some money on some stuff. I got like the Woody upgrade to the caravan. um, And I bought the nice Hyperion suit for Sasha. Uh, I don't know if that makes a difference. I I did get the Hyperion uh, suit for Sasha. But the big thing I spent money on was Loderbot. Uh, which skin did you get for Loderbot? The tuxedo, of course. Okay. Because he is a gentleman, yes. after all. He is. He is. I did not have enough money for the Loderbot tuxedo. Well, at so. that point, I hadn't really spent any of the money, so I had most of the money uh, up to that point. But uh, throughout the game, uh, you're able to uh, get skins, pr- very Borderland style. And that also comes to play in the story. But before we really dive into the story, should we talk about the technical issues? Because, uh, boy, did I have them. We can. I wanted to talk for a minute about Fiona uh, okay. first. Um, so Reese's thing is uh, he learns personal responsibility. Um, Fiona's story is more of like a coming of age story where she's like growing up um, after, you know, some story things happen. She gets betrayed. She gets trained to become a vault hunter. Um, and so a lot of her stuff focuses more on combat which is just QTEs, um, yeah. which this game is probably the most QTE-heavy Telltale game Oh, I've it has played. to be. I mean, it and has QTEs, to be in their entire catalog, I should say. And, and QTEs, when used appropriately, can be really awesome. Um, you know, a lot of the God of War stuff from the older games, like, you know, Killing the Gods, those were all QTEs, but you still felt really powerful. Um, and there's one... Uh, one scene in particular that feels really good um, with the QTEs, which is when you're fighting. Uh, it's at the end of Chapter 3 when the other two Vault Hunters show up and um, you fight those. Like, if you declare yourself a Vault Hunter... Oh, see, I didn't uh, get that. I didn't declare myself a Vault Hunter. Oh, okay. So, if, yeah, if you declare yourself a Vault Hunter, you have this entire fight between yourself and Mordecai and... What's the guy's name? Brick. Um, Brick. Um, and then Athena, like there's some back and forth with her where that you do some sort of cooperative fighting with her. And that was a QTE scene that you used it really well because it wasn't over the top, um, which was what the final boss fight was, well, or the final QTE was. Well, also that the, one was super over the top. Well, also the sequence against the accountants in episode four was way over the top. Yes, but that was over the top in like a comedic way. Yeah, in a good way. In a good way, yeah. It was and, over the top in a good I think way. And fu- I think that entire sequence also explains some of the you know, trouble Gearbox has had over the years. I think that's a, a documentary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we'll talk more fully about that in, in a yeah, later. In about two hours. QTE. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that one was over the top, but in a good way. Like, it felt very comedic, like the way that they pulled it off. And I was laughing through that whole thing. The final fight... That's a giant QTE with Gordas. Uh, it just got old really fast. And there were a few times that I messed up, but it didn't matter. Yeah. Which really took me out of it because it's like, well, I mean, okay, so this doesn't matter. Especially when it got really complicated and you were having to do like uh, fighting style. different combo uh, moves uh, from fighting a, game. a fighting game. Yeah. Like it was okay when you were doing the finger guns. Like that was kind of funny. Did you do bro fist with her? Uh, no, I didn't get bro fist. Okay, so after finger guns, you can try and do bro fist, and uh, it's just, like, one of the choices. And she's like, bro fist, and, like, nothing happens. And Reese is like, well, I thought maybe, like, your fist would shoot off like a rocket or something. And she's like, no. I mean, it was a good effort. <laughs> it was it was really creative. Yeah, Gordis is like, my Don't second favorite. don't patronize me. Yeah, Gordis was my second favorite as well. She's so cute. Yeah, which, uh, and sweet. which we'll get to Gordis in a little bit as well. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, that's, I kind of got off a little bit. That's just what I know. I wanted to say, like, Fiona gets a lot less character growth throughout the story, but she has a different type of arc. Um, and at time, like, when they're working together, like we said earlier, they play off of each other really well. But when they're isolated, Reese has a much better story than Fiona does. At least, in my opinion. So... Okay, you wanted to talk about the technical issues. Yeah, because which... uh, at least the Twitch version of this game has a hell of a lot of them. 
I mean, more so than your typical telltale animation bugs that not wanting to do things properly. Uh, I had at one point one major choice that it completely ignored. Another uh, choice that they acted like I did something different uh, that cost me a, a character at the end. Because uh, at the end, uh, depending on your choices, uh, various uh, characters become available for the final fight. I had one character that didn't show up, even though all my choices up to that point should have uh, unlocked her. I had uh, the characters act like I did another choice, even though my cho- uh, my choice screen didn't show me making the choice that pissed them off. And then at the very end, the game crashed. So I had to watch the ending on YouTube. Yeah. I did not have any of those problems. I don't know if there is a major difference between the Twitch version and the Steam version, or if it's just like one of those weird hardware hiccups um, where that you had some kind of hardware issue that was causing a glitch, and I didn't. But all I suffered from was the regular Telltale uh, games animation weirdness and clipping uh, issues. Oh, some of the there's some of the clipping on this game that's just horrendous. Yeah, it, it gets pretty bad at times. The worst of it, I think, I went back and, and watched a little more carefully some stuff from episode one, and particularly when the stranger is dragging you through the desert. The the duct tape. Uh, yeah, the duct tape and the hooky thingy mm-hmm. uh, are just like going through each other like crazy. Yeah, this game feels very rushed, especially episode one and five. Yeah. Did you catch the joke from episode two? Uh when what's his face the narrator guy that starts out marcus um yeah marcus is like oh, i know i know it's been uh, such yeah. a long time yeah making fun of the fact that they took a lot a long time to get the ep- second episode done yeah yeah i don't know on the one hand i thought that was kind of cute but on the other hand it's like okay telltale although this was earlier in their run this was their third game after they made all their changes to the and like became the Telltale that we know. Yeah, I know they it's did a Walking Dead. Yeah, I know it's a bit of older think, uh, Telltale at this point, but this still shows that that engine was ancient even then. And yeah, and I have to say also, I realize the Borderlands uh, isn't exactly known for its graphical fidelity, but there's some ugly fucking textures in this game. A uh, very yeah blotchy and uh, blocky. Yeah. And it wouldn't be bad if they kept that in the background, but there was a few times that they were up close to the scenery where it was apparent just how low poly some of the, or low poly and uh, low resolution some of the textures were, low poly models. Yeah. Yeah, particularly uh, like the far distant backgrounds mm-hmm. or any time the, the camera is moving quickly. So in the chase scenes and yeah. in particular, that god awful like escape oh, uh, in it, chapter five yeah, it when you're jet- escaping the it alien. jittered like crazy, damn it. Yeah, I was worried the game was about to crash when I when that started happening. Yeah, I saw that and thought, Oh, how did this get past Q uh uh you know uh, QA and th- then I thought, wait a minute, this is a telltale game. Of course it doesn't have QA. Yeah. So one more, like, sort of overall question, and then I think I'm ready to start doing the the play-by-play. Compared to the other Borderlands games, which I know that these are... I mean, the other Borderlands games are first-person shooters, and this is not that. But which do you think is better? Uh, That's uh, really tough, because my primary problem with... uh, Well, the Borderlands games I've played, because I've played, I would say, probably about a quarter of one before... Whenever I've been playing it, uh, my partner on that has always done something to take me over. Either just stop playing. Uh, they, I had one that actually hacked his save file to the point where things were getting one shot, which you know, made things not fun. Uh, I'd had one that just would run off constantly and I got tired of being left behind. Yeah, I come up to a abandoned camp and it's just full of corpses. Uh, I played all of two and Far too much of two, I would say, and I never played the pre sequel because didn't see the point. I have to say I like this better than the other Borderlands games, uh, partly due to I think the fact that it's a change of uh, of uh, genre, and I do think that the Borderlands uh, world 
works a lot better in an RPG than it does as a first person shooter. At least the, the first person shooter type that they go for, where it's the looter shooter. Everything has 20 billion hit points. And, you know, you're going to shoot at the boss for a half an hour to get the first bar off. Yeah. So I've played entirely through the first Borderlands. I didn't finish Borderlands 2. Like, I know how the game ends. But I played, uh, I don't know, through three quarters of Borderlands 2. Um, I, I never actually beat it. Well, if you didn't know uh, how Borderlands then... 2 ends, boy, did you, uh, by the uh, <laughs> end of the starting sequence of this. Th- yeah, th- this is no, kind of I... a weird place for uh, Tales of the Borderlands as well, because it initially takes place before the pre-sequel, because the intro to the pre-sequel is post-Borderlands 2. And then it does a year uh, time skip uh, at uh, the end of episode four uh, to end up long after the uh, events of the pre-sequel. Yeah, but I mean, so I'm familiar with the story of the pre-sequel because I, I like the lore of the Borderlands universe. Yeah, I like the, games the wor- are kind of yeah, I like the eh. world building and maybe the fact that I like this a, a lot more than the others is just that. Yes, there are times that they hammer home a reference or a meme or a joke, but it's not as often, and it does, and the jokes don't feel as stale. Maybe it's just the fact that this has a lot more time between it releasing and when I played it than Borderlands Two, where oh, double rainbow, ha ha ha. Yeah, I I like this better than either of the border or any of the borderlands games i'm not played the pre-sequel but i'm i like i looked up the story and um, i actually never looked up the story so what it added to the lore uh, the only thing that i know is that uh, it starts with athena getting captured which takes place in this game yeah. so yeah I, I was thinking okay why is athena gone and then i looked it up it's like oh uh, that's how the pre-sequel starts so you know this is taking place before that yeah um, but anyways, uh, yeah, I, I like this more. I like the world building that's always gone into the Borderlands series. They do a good job with that. And, the, you know, the main thrust of the games has been looter shooter with friends. And that's fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, I've always been a story guy. And so having something that's a lot more story focused, even though it's not as story focused as the other Telltale games that I've played or Life is Strange, it's still a lot more story focused than the Borderlands, the other Borderlands games. So, I I like it better, I think. I'd like to see something closer to a pure single-player RPG in the Borderlands universe. Okay, We'll okay. probably never uh, get that, I'm, but I'm, I'd like to see I'm it. I'm going to give you an idea, or give you a, my idea, and you're going to fall in love with it, all right? Borderlands okay. universe, Divinity, Original Sin, combat uh, system. Yes. Yes, please. I'm in. I could go for that. Uh, which maybe that's Wasteland too. Now that I think about it, <laughs> yeah, with, uh, less maybe. with less memes and uh, references. Yeah, maybe so. Need to play Wasteland too at some point. I, I started it at one point. I just uh, fell off of it because I had other things to do. Yeah. All right. No, you don't have to. Okay. Before we dive into the beat by beat, Katie walked in and she's looking at me Uh-oh. like she wants to talk to me. So, well, somebody's in trouble. Anyways. Moving on to our beat by beat of Tales from the Borderlands. Yeah, so, because I think we uh, beat the technical issues uh, to death. Indeed. Chapter one or episode one or whatever is called Zero Sum, and it's zero like the name of the character Zero from Borderlands 2. And, yeah, care uh, to guess who shows up? Yeah. Spoiler alert, guess who shows up? So uh, this game or this chapter opens up with uh, Reese walking through the halls on Helios, which is the big Hyperion space station that looks like an H. And uh, you're having a conversation with your best friend, Vaughn, uh, or you, wh- who appear to be your best friends, Vaughn and Yvette. Uh, well, no, that's not true. It doesn't start there, because it starts with being uh, yeah. dragged yeah, it starts, through the desert by the stranger. Yeah, it starts with uh, you getting captured as Reese. And Fiona's already been captured. We don't know what happened to her. But it looks like she's been sitting there for a while. And, and yeah. she even makes a comment. Well, you just wanted to talk? Why, why didn't you start having me tell you this story? I've been here for hours. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
But so then research some of the story, and that's where it picks up walking through Helios. And you're talking to Vaughn and Yvette. Uh, and you think you're going to have this great promotion to some kind of vice president, something or other. And you go into the office where you're expecting to receive your promotion, and Vasquez, Hugo Vasquez, your Also arch known as Crunk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that uh -oh. bugged me for a moment. It's like, that voice, I know that voice. Who is that voice? And then it clicked. Crunk? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think of him as um, the guy from Rules of Engagement, the, the old hut, because that's the first thing I ever saw him in. It's a sitcom um, where he's like the husband in an old married couple that mirrors like this young married couple. Um, at least the first thing that I remember because yeah, I never uh, uh, it's never what, saw Emperor's that. New Groove. Yeah, but I was a kid. Like I have since seen that movie because I was like, I want to watch stuff with Patrick Warburton in it, which that's the guy's name, uh, his his real life name. Yeah, and they do some interesting things in that movie. <laughs> that is not yeah. your typical Disney movie. No. Um, but anyways, uh, it, I think that was a good choice for him. Oh, he yeah. He pulls off douchebag really well. Um, but anyways, so uh, Hugo Vasquez has actually gotten your promotion, and uh, he vented your, like, your old boss into space and took his job. Um, yeah, it seems like that's the typical way to get ahead in Hyperion. Just kill your boss. I may yeah. work for Handsome uh, Jack. Yep. Um. And this is but post he uh, gets, Handsome Jack, by the way. He, yeah. He's a little living impaired right now. <laughs> but it gets better. But uh, he demotes you to janitor or assistant vice janitor or something like yeah. that. Um, and then he gets a phone call from August. Uh, someone on Pandora. It's August, but I don't think you find that out till later. Um, and he's trying to set up a deal uh, to get a vault key. Um, and then you use your Echo Eye to like hack his computer and get the deal or get the. Well, you don't know what it is at first. The... You, uh, you don't even know it's a vault key. You just realize it's pretty and it's uh, worth uh, ten million dollars uh, uh, to Vasquez. That means you want it to screw him over because that's your main motivation is uh, to get one of her on Vasquez at this point. Yep. So then you leave Vasquez's office. Uh. Some either you or Vaughn, depending on whether or not like you notice a trash can or not, mm -hmm. knock a trash can over, yeah. and an announcement's made for you to come clean it up. <laughs> um, uh, and then a vet's like, "So you're not buying me lunch then, are you?" <laughs> yeah, um, I didn't like her from the beginning. Like she made that comment, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, you're uh, a mooch." Yeah, and then yeah, later on, yeah, I was, I was a, like, "It's like, oh." Uh, I knew it. I, I wasn't sure about her, uh, especially when you were down on the planet while uh, doing the deal. You're thinking, oh, I'm thinking something's not right here, particularly uh, at an event later on, which we'll get to. But uh, yeah, didn't fully trust her. But uh, you know, I was also thinking maybe it's just culprit culture because part of a uh, Hyperion's thing is also finger gunning people and you know, uh, pretending to die. Yeah. Uh, which comes into play a lot later. So, you know, I was thinking, okay, maybe it's just a Hyperion thing because they're all douchebags. Yeah. But uh, Vaughn is in accounting and he, like, instantly gets you $10 million. Yeah, it's like, um, oh, you need $10 million? Uh, Hang on. <laughs> um, so you get that and you head down to the planet in Vasquez's, like, brand new car. That he j had just ordered. So you stole his car. You're trying to steal his deal. You head down to the planet. Um, and isn't this where the episode scene, like it's the, that sort of intro plays? Yeah. All the, There's an intro for every episode. I, I mean, it's, like it's Borderlands. And a montage. It, it's Borderlands. Yeah. Of course, they're going to have the musical intro that's overly long. Granted, it didn't get old for me, but then again. No, they did a really good job with those intros. Yeah, and some of the intros also make heavy reference, like one of them is essentially the opening to, or the launch for Armageddon. Either Armageddon or the right stuff, or, you know, your typical space movie. Yeah. Um, But so it plays the intro, and you drive into this town, um, and you're trying to find the place where the deal's supposed to go down, 
and you talk to some shady characters who recognize you're from Hyperion. Well, considering they, you're wearing a jacket that literally says Hyperion on it, it's not exactly rocket science here. Indeed. And you do look exactly like <laughs> two high society, one percent of corporate people, as opposed to the oh, human trash that lives on Pandora. <clears throat> you okay over yeah. there? Don't die on me, buddy. Uh not yet. It, it takes me a couple episodes to get to that. <laughs> uh, but anyways, <clears throat> so they start attacking you, and you call for uh, support from Yvette, who sends you a Loaderbot. Yeah, also known who, as the best character in the game. Yeah, Loaderbot <laughs> is by far the best character in the game. So Loaderbots are enemies from previous Borderlands Yeah, but uh, since games. the death of Handsome Jack, they've been getting a lot smarter. <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah, uh, they, they literally say that. Sentient. And Loderbot starts out with some level of sentience, and then by the end of the game, he's a fully developed character. Well, that's that's the wrong way to say that because he's a fully developed character. Yeah, he's from just the beginning. He, he he gains experience. He levels up. Yeah, he levels up. He's very leveled up by the yeah, end. Yeah, and depending on uh, uh, at this point, you get your first, I think, major choice here it well you get two major choices here one is what you outfit loader bot with granted it doesn't really matter in the long run because it's just you know your initial loadout and loader bot loses that in this fight but you also have a choice to tell him to self-destruct or evacuate and yeah. uh, for me i told him to equip a right shield and rockets to fight off all the bandits because that seemed like a good combo yeah, I picked Riot Shield and Grenades, and me and only 10% of other players picked the Riot Shield and Grenades. Yeah, I got 16% on Riot Shield and Rockets, which Riot Shield has a, a link to the line, uh, War Does Not Compute. <laughs> yeah. Which gives yeah, you an I would idea. I say most people went for the minigun. Yeah, see, I didn't go probably minigun. Probably minigun and rocket launcher was the, probably the t- number one choice. Like, I haven't looked these up. I wonder if it's on the wiki, if it has the choices um, for that. not certain, actually, but... Uh, um, uh, did you tell him to evacuate? Yeah, I did uh, tell okay. him to evacuate. Uh, did you tell him to evacuate? Uh, of course, or I, I told him to evacuate because I liked Loverbot. I went. I was hoping that I would see more of him. Uh, yeah, I got my first real laugh from Loderbot during that scene. Um, the war does not compute line was pretty funny. Um, and is it in this scene where he refers to you as as father or something? <laughs> I like think that? so. Yeah. And I had a good chuckle oh, at that, too. I think he also does it later on as well. Yeah, and then also later on he refers to you as my human. <laughs> which I thought, and then he pats you on the head. That's in Chapter 3, whenever you have him lift the debris. So my human needs me. Uh, and then he pats uh, you on the uh, head. Uh, uh, and, and, he did and, and, a good job. And he's also talking about how uh, th- this relationship is very unequal. I'm giving too much to this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, loader bot. Uh, the robots in general, which uh, uh, there's three actually that you could encounter, are uh, by far the best characters. Granted, yeah, I, only, Loderbot, I only got to Mortis, really account, uh, encounter two, and Dumpy. Yeah, Dumpy. Which I yeah. I didn't get uh, to, uh, Dumpy because that's t- I got Dumpy. That's tied to a particular choice, which we obviously diverged on. Indeed, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, so at this point, uh, you get to uh, the world of. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the last uh, bit is. I can't remember what it is, but it's essentially. It's called the world of curiosities. World of curiosities, and it's a bunch of past Borderlands characters that you've killed if you played the other games, stuff and mounted. And one of them is Shade, which if you played the DLC for Borderlands, realize. Something is up with him. <laughs> yeah. Turns out he's not dead. Nope. But and he gets you with a jump scare. Yeah. Uh, there's I think Yeah, there's two major jump scares in this uh chapter and then they don't really do any more, thankfully. Yeah, I don't really like jump scares. Yeah, I if they kept up with the jump scares going to the upper other episodes, I would have just quit. Because it it's, gets old quickly. Shade does both jump scares, right? Because yeah. he also gets a jump scare on Fiona whenever you're yeah, but the, her. Yeah, but then again, that's kind of Shade's thing. Yeah. It, it was less jumpy with Fiona. Like, I, I was like, Shade's going to be there, isn't he? Yeah. And then he was. 
Yeah, and also uh, Shade's character when it, it was kind of just hanging there, uh, pretended to be stuffed and mounted, had some horrendous clipping, or I should say anti-clipping, because his uh, big thing is that he's utterly insane. He went too long without water, and uh, depending on your interpretation of that DLC, he either murdered everyone, or as people died, he just stuffed and mounted them because he was lonesome. Well, he keeps a firework in his uh, teeth, you know, like a, uh, you know, your stereotypical southerner with a, a stalk of wheat, you know? Yeah. Uh, but for me, his firework, whenever he was standing there, was about a foot away from his mouth, just uh, hovering in midair. And when I saw that, I was thinking, oh, this game's going to be real polished. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't have that issue. Or I didn't notice it, one of the two. Well, I was scanning the individual uh, people to get them more info. And that's when it was yeah. really apparent for Shade. Uh, but then you eventually get to the deal with August. And, uh, well, you find out later why, you know, uh, the deal doesn't go quite as smoothly as first intended. Uh, but August's uh, companion... Is talking about how he doesn't have a good, how he doesn't have a good feeling about uh, these two uh, people uh, coming in, uh, looking all douchey, and you know with the, that look on their face. Yeah, she's like, "They're coming in here. He's got that <laughs> business look on his face and the money." And he's like, "Isn't that a good thing? Isn't that what we want?" <laughs> uh, and then she has like a one eighty, yeah, on that. And yeah, you find out from Fiona's end why that's the case a little bit later, but. Um, but yeah, that's, pr that's where Reese's story for the first part ends of this. Then we get our first jump to Fiona. Um, we meet her and her sister, Sasha and Felix, their, uh, surrogate father. Mm -hmm. Um, he, the, the story goes that he found them on the street when they were orphans and like picking pockets and uh, they tried to pick his pocket, but he caught them and then like showed them how to do it better. And then they sort of became a family after that. Um, and right away I was like, somebody's gonna, in this group is gonna betray the other people. I mean, it was pretty and much obvious, sure. wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, I'm not sure exactly who it's gonna be. It's either gonna be our character, Fiona, or Felix. Yeah, I was pretty I'm sure there sure was gonna be a screw one. over either Fiona and Sasha screwing over Felix, or vice versa, because those two were way too close to, you know, to screw one over other. One yeah. over, over, you know, so... Uh, I was pretty sure that the sisters were going to hang uh, together. Uh, assuming, uh, uh, do you think they're uh, blood sisters or do you think they're you know, sisters? I think it's implied that they're like their sisters, like blood. Yeah, th they're very different looking. That's why I was, uh, you know, not sure about that. Yeah. No, I I think it's implied that they're actual sisters and not just like they grew up together and you know we just call each other sister. I think it's implied that they're. Sister, sisters. Um, but anyways, the, you get to get a look at this vault key, and I'm making air quotes because it's a fake that they've put together to set this deal up. Yeah, it's and very Felix, glowy, Fiona, though. It is. Uh, Felix, Fiona, and Sasha are all trying to screw over August and Vasquez for the money. Um, and then there's some other people that they're trying to cut out of the deal that you don't realize who they are at this point. I think he makes reference, August does, making reference to cutting out, mm -hmm. uh, what's her face? Oh, what's her name? Valerie. Is it Valerie? But you don't know who she is or what that means yet. Um, just that you're, you're going to do that. Uh, there's a funny scene where Fiona goes to the bar where Sasha and August are. Because Fiona's posing as this vault, uh, or as this uh, archaeologist who found the vault key. Yeah, and you get a bunch of info really quickly. <laughs> yeah, and you have to remember it. But you only have to remember, like, one piece of it. Yeah. Um. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was pretty easy to, to remember anyways. But it is, like, a bunch of stuff really quickly. But there's that funny scene with the bouncer, how you can try and, like, trick him. I thought that was fun. Uh, I'm, uh, of course I'm on the VIP list. Look, they put it look. right there. He's like, oh, it's got your picture on it. That's how important I am. <laughs> uh, there's words on and this. Then he, and then he buys it like Sasha comes out and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, Sasha. 
Uh, they they but, do have a lot of uh, good moments of humor when they get away from the references. I, I think Borderlands' humor is a lot better when it's not tied to something like that. Yeah. I agree. I mean, you know, I don't have a problem with the references and the Easter eggs. And yeah, stuff, but it also but makes overdo it. it and don't make that the basis for your jokes because what if people don't know stuff? Or the fact you that, know? you know, uh, games uh, last longer than six months. Yeah. So if. I'm going back to the whole double rainbow thing. Someone that didn't really pay attention to the internet. Yeah. What was that? Three, four years ago now? Oh, God. It was longer than that. It was in like 2011 or 2012 when double rainbow was a thing. Yeah. So. Because Borderlands 2 came out the year I got married, 20, 2012. So. Uh, so a couple of years before that or a year or two before that. So, yeah. Uh, it really dates very quickly. Yeah. Double rainbow. Someone who's though stuck and that like that's sort of where my pop culture knowledge starts to dissipate. <laughs> I get all of those references. Woo. And the rest of it you have to go to R slash out of the loop. Yeah. But um Maybe they should make a yeah, an entire wiki from out of the loop uh, for all the Borderlands references. There probably is one somewhere. It's the internet, man. Everything is on the internet. Including the internet. Indeed. Uh, but anyway, so you go in and you have this interaction with August where you have to have that remembered information. And for some reason, one of the major choices is whether or not you chose to grab August. Um, it, that um, one was about 50-50 on the percentages. I chose to grab August. Yeah, see, I kept it cool. Touching uh, the yeah, key. I pl- uh, kept my cool and doesn't matter the, uh, in the slightest. He gets a little bit of paint on his uh, face because he touches it while the paint's still wet. Never mind why there's paint on a giant glowy key. I don't know. Uh, then he wipes his face and, yeah, he has paint on his face for, you know, a minute. Yeah, if you grab his hand, he's like, oh, that's really bold of you, little girl. I kind of respect that. But uh, you need to be watching while you're touching me. Why would you do that? And, like, you have some different options to say. And if you've played Borderlands, you know that... Um, What's that stuff called? Uh, Ethereum or Elenium or whatever it is. The, the, the like ore that comes the glowy out of the stuff. vaults. Yeah, the glowy stuff is toxic. And you're like, oh, didn't you know that this stuff is toxic? And if you touch it, you're going to get a massive dose of radiation and you'll be sick for a while. And he's like, oh, thanks for that. I didn't know that. And then it's just like. Then he know, remembers that. August will remember that. That's another thing, too. Like, just generally, they kind of use that in different ways rather than just saying like a character will remember that sometimes they uh, her face will remember joke. that yeah like you punch someone her face will remember that or it's like a character dies and it's like so and so will not remember that and a couple times it pops up and it'll be like you should remember that so they they use that in a in some interesting yeah ways the wolf among the us did that as well at one point yeah uh whenever you punched out the guy in the bar he won't remember yeah, that. Oh yeah, he won't remember that. But this, um, but this leans but, on a lot more. But then again, Borderlands, so they tend to lean on jokes a lot more. Yeah, you know, much like yeah, us. Also breaking the fourth wall with that. That was that was good. Um, but yeah, that's that's nice. Um, but let's see. So then, um, time sort of moves forward, and you drive out with August to make the deal with who you think is going to be Vasquez, and then it turns out to be Reese. Um, there's a problem, uh, cause Reese has an echo eye. So they like, as soon as he goes to scan that with his eye, he's going to realize that it's a fake. Yeah. But so, honestly, did they really have to do that? Because they're assuming that he's not an idiot. Yeah. So they could have been perfectly fine not scanning him. Yeah. But it puts together this whole convoluted situation where you and Sasha have to work together to short out the... Uh, the echo, is it the echo eye that they're trying to short yeah. out or yeah. So that's why Sasha actually walks over to the other side of the room. It's so that you can get close enough for Fiona to put the little EMP device on the case that has the air quotes vault key in it. Um, and then when, uh, Reese goes to scan it, she triggers the EMP. Um, and it, because he's got, he, he's holding it with his robot arm and so the EMP, like, freaks it out for a second, and he drops the vault key, and it breaks. Yeah, which, um, uh, the key is told to be broken a couple ways, actually. 
uh, because there's this, you know, him dropping it because of the cybernetics. But also, uh, after begging and, you know, getting in that big uh, tug of war with the case, it drops then. So how does the vault key break? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember the vault key breaking in the tug of war scene. Maybe that was because of a choice you uh, made. Maybe, but uh, uh, it broke in two different ways for me because uh, whenever they go back and say, oh, no, 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 he was begging and uh, tugging on it. Uh, that's when it broke. But Fiona was telling how the uh, vault key broke uh, whenever the you know, cybernetics were uh, EMP'd. Created an unreliable narrator, so who knows? Maybe the vault key didn't break all along. Yeah. But regardless, the in, in the story, the vault key breaks, um, and shit start, is about to go down with everybody, because August is like, oh my god, you betrayed me, this is a fake... And Reese and Vaughn are like, well, shit, we're not giving you the money because obviously yeah, this is back. fake. And then some bandits come in uh, about that time, steal the case. There's a huge shootout. Um, many, many people die, but obviously your four main characters survive. You do get a choice to take a shot at August with Fiona. So Fiona has like a little hidden, uh, sort of like a Derringer type yeah. tiny pistol. Um, but only one she bullet. Has, like on a on a wrist mount. And at this point, yeah, she only has one bullet and you can choose to try and shoot at August with that bullet, which I, neither of us did. Yeah. I thought, uh, thought that he was way too far away for her to make that shot. Yeah. I was like, there's no way she's, he's going to make, or she's going to make this shot. And you know, this is a telltale game. Like we've got one bullet. That means that later on, there's going to be an opportunity to use that bullet. And if I used it now and wasted it and I need it later. Uh, and I'm glad I saved it. Oh boy. We'll, we'll yeah. get to that. <laughs> We'll get to that in a little bit. So, yeah, your your main characters are all piled into the caravan, which is just a car. Uh, uh, essentially a camper on uh, on three wheels. Yeah, a Borderlands camper. Um, and you are, uh, like, trying to talk about how you're going to get the, the money back. And, uh, and Von- Sasha and Fiona uh, well, are... are uh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, they're, like, going to kill you and, like, push you out of the caravan. And you're like, no, we can track the money. There's a tracker on it. Um, and all this other stuff. And eventually you convince them that, okay, you can track the money down. Uh, and we didn't mention this, but back when you were walking through the hall of wonders or discovery or whatever it, I said it was called. Yeah. Of curiosities. There's uh what's his name? Dr. Nuri Nakayumi. Uh, he, Nuriyaki? yeah, he's the one that has the most epic of boss fights with a uh, flight of stairs. Yeah. Nakiyama, that's his, I'm looking at the witness yeah, so I can uh, kind of cheat on some of the stuff. Uh, yeah, that um, was a bit of a letdown. I, I was hoping to at least be able to shoot him. Yeah, but you get a key card from him uh, off of his body, and you're like, oh, I can use this to, I should be able to, like, track down, like, be able to use this to link up with stuff. Yeah, he was wanting to link in, access to- because at this point, you know, uh, Reese and Vaughn are pretty much uh, one in men by Hyperion because they realize uh, some money's missing and uh, a car is missing. A very important car is missing. So uh, yeah. uh, their access has been uh, revoked and they're hu- being hunted. So he says, oh, well, I could just uh, you know, use this and use this ID. Uh, jacks it into his brain and boy, did he jack it in. Yep. He immediately <laughs> passes out. Um, and you also hear this voice that's kind of garbled, mm-hmm. so you, you can't realize who it is at that moment. But it's like, oh, what do we have here? Do you think you can... I forget exactly what the voice says, yeah. but it's like taunting him. And then he passes out, like, you know, what the hell. And then he wakes up, and Vaughn was able to track down the money um, without him. And they're at this bandit uh, camp. Like, it turns out it's like a big stadium with a, a racetrack inside, but you don't know that yet. Of course, it's uh, it's Borderlands. Of course, there's, uh, yeah, the bandit camp is a giant stadium. Yeah. Uh, so you're there, and you're, like, trying to devise a way in, and Reese, like, goes through this whole thing of, like, we're going to do this, and it's going to be epic. And then, it, then it's, like, at the end, it's, like, guys. <laughs> and they, they're, they like, we found another way in. Come on. Uh, you guys just did what I said, right? Yeah. <laughs> um. I do think so that uh, up- uh, both of them uh, being together, but also the unreliable narrator parts are the best of this game. They do that really well. Yeah. So then you wind up inside. Uh, Reese and Sasha are together. And because a, a guy approached uh, as you guys were like 
go in to climb into this little access tunnel. Um, so, or not Sasha, Fiona and Vaughn wind up up top. So, you know, it splits the party and mixes the, the members. Yeah, which it does that a few times. Um, yeah, and this is when Reese has this relationship that can be built with Sasha that implies that they're going to wind up dating by the end of the game. And it all starts here. And Sasha really doesn't like you. Like, she hates <laughs> Hyperion and the corporations because she feels like they've ruined Pandora. And you can, you know, be nice to her, flirt with her. Uh, and, and I was very nice and respectful to her the whole time. Yeah. Like, I wanted to prove her wrong. Yeah, which, uh, uh, like, which some of these uh, choices uh, percentages towards the end makes it very clear that a lot of people were at least nice to her. Yeah. Um, and so this is where she starts to be like, okay, I guess you're not so bad after all. Uh, there's a really funny scene where that you uh, try and take down a couple of guards, and she kills her guard immediately, and like you jump on your guard's back, and like trying to choke him, and at first he's like, "Is that you, <laughs> Eric?" I'm just gonna make up a name. Yeah, he's like, "Is that you, Eric? Are you're messing with me, aren't you?" And you try and strangle him for a couple minutes. He's like, "Oh, you're being serious. You're <laughs> you're really trying to do this." Yeah, yeah. It's not so and, much neck slap as it is dry hump. Yeah. And then Sasha's like, do you need help? And he's like, no. no, let him do it. Let him do it on his own. He can figure it out. And then eventually you do take him down because you have a, like a stun baton. A stun baton. Yeah. Um, and you, you knock him out. Uh, not just knock him out. You send him flying. That stun baton has a hell of a kick. Yeah. Um, and then there's some more bonding uh, as you're like trying to solve this problem and get the elevator to lift. Um, and then as the elevator sort of rises into the stadium, it cuts back to um fiona and vaughn as they're trying to convince this guy this guard guy to let them go and i was like really hostile with him he was like what are you doing here and i'm like what are you doing here <laughs> he's like uh Same. <laughs> this is my job I, I i work here i'm supposed to be here yeah but it really like, confuses well, i'm them. supposed to be here too yeah he gets really confused but eventually <laughs> you convince him you're racers and then you can go over and buy masks yeah i just um, used the psycho mask i bought the really expensive mask uh, the I forget what it was called, but the the mask that you pick comes back a couple of times in the game. Yeah, um, yeah so. which I thought was pretty nice. Just like a little simple choice you that it carries forward for some cosmetic stuff. Um, I especially liked it when it shows back up at the end. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was how I was like, oh, that's Vaughn. They got they brought Vaughn back. Uh, I knew it was game, immediately was wearing the mask. I knew it was Vaughn because he was jacked. Yeah, Vaughn is weirdly jacked. <laughs> I think that's what they say. He's like, oh, I got an exercise bike. You don't get apps like that from an exercise bike. Uh, it's a space um, uh, exercise bike. Yeah. But anyway, so then you wind up in this death race. Uh, you get a Chariot. psycho. Yeah. Yeah. Fiona is, is like in the chariot and Vaughn and the, the psycho guy that you get uh, – are driving the motorcycles for the chariot. Yeah, what did he call the psycho? His uh, crotch machine, or, it, or, or or is that later in the game? Uh, you get a group of biker psychos. Yeah, I think that's later. No, nope, my shiny crotch machine. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, but anyways, so then you wind up in the arena for this death race. Um, Zero, the Vault Hunter, shows up. I mean, he's shown up a couple of times, like you've seen him in this ep uh, in this ep chapter once or twice, because he shows up at the fight with the bandits, um, at the Hall of or World of Curiosities, um, and then he shows up here to fight the boss guy, who is a, a boss from one of the Borderlands games. Like we've seen him before, I just couldn't place exactly I where. I think he's uh in the Torg DLC. Okay, um, but he, I mean, he plays, like, dubstep out of his chest. Of course, but a Borderlands. Giant subwoofer, yeah. Um, and so, there are some action, you know, fighting happens. You uh, mean QTEs happen? Yeah, fighting QTEs happen, and uh, roller, or not roller derby. Uh, death race. Car, death race happens. Um, there's one tiny story thing that it did show up in, what I mean, or did it? It did show up in the main choice. Um, uh, shit, I forgot his name. Vasquez calls you and is like offering you this deal. Like, he's like, Oh, I, you know, I know you did all this stuff and I'm gonna be in deep shit, but if you'll give me the money back, I'll make sure you're protected and we can put all of this on Vaughn. 
uh, and you can choose to like agree with him and do that or say you're not going to do it or just hang up on him. And I just hung up on him. I was like, no, I'm not going to betray Vaughn. And then I hung up on him. And Sasha's like, wow, I thought you'd sell him out. Yeah, I trusted Sasha. Yeah. But then again, um, that's an 84% chance. Or, or uh, yeah. there's a trust Sasha at one point in this that I can't recall, but the chose Vaughn is 88.8%. Sorry. Oh, trusted Sasha is uh, when she asked to see her son, Baton, because it's oh, like yeah. some kind of special oh, yeah. high tech model uh, or something. Which is probably just setting up uh, for the, uh, you know, uh, the romance angle, which honestly is just a thing. Yeah. And I, and I also trusted Sasha, and then I chose Vaughn. Um, but so yeah, action fighting QTEs happen, and there's some antics with the case of money. Yeah, that like, just gets bounced around. Which if it had a bomb in it, that would think would have exploded like three or four times over, wouldn't it? It took some major hits. I think hits. so. I think so. It gets eaten by a, a giant skag or something like that, and it changes hands between a lot of bandits, and it flies around, and lands up on the trucks. Like you're following the case around through the scene, which is like a pretty common like camera thing that you'll do yeah. in movies and stuff so like i i got why they did that but in the midst of a qte like it was you know it, it felt a little odd like this was a place where the qtes went on for two yeah long. and there's uh, actually i think it was uh during the bandit fight but there was also one uh here where the the stylized arrows at times was a little hard to dis uh, dis to discern which direction that they wanted me to press yeah um, Thankfully, you didn't have to uh, pass all the QTEs, but there was a couple that was just irritating. Yeah. Yeah, this was the first time I died. I accidentally fell off and got ran over. <laughs> I just, like, I, I messed I messed up something, and I got hit by the the arm, uh, like the grabby arm on that big truck, and it knocked me off, and I got ran over by Yeah, during a motorcycle one of my ride. deaths, uh, I failed a couple of the QTEs just because of the arrow uh, stylization. I'd press the, yeah. uh, it was especially bad for like right and down. Uh, I pressed one of the wrong directions and actually got stuck on the uh, game over to the point where I had to alt F4 and restart from desktop, which also irritated me. Yeah. Um, eventually though, you wind up succeeding. Uh, Felix gets the money, but then you realize that Felix is betrayed yeah, he's... for 10 for $10 million. Yeah, he kicks uh, the caravan that's uh, stuck up on the uh, embankment because you get the money, you try to escape, and you hit the embankment and you kind of get stuck there and the case flies out right into Felix's arms. If memory serves yep. correctly. Uh, yeah. some Something like that. Um, and so, like, he, you're like, oh my god, you're gonna betray me, like, you're gonna shoot me and leave me here. Or, he points his gun at you, but then, you know, you're like, you won't do it. And he does, like he puts his gun away, and he's like, "You're right. I'm not gonna do it, but you know, I am gonna leave you here." Yeah. Then you get your like, uh, big choice for the uh, chapter, which is, do you shoot Felix or not? And I fucking shot him. And then you also without get, hesitation. Yeah, same here, uh, pretty much. And then you also get a choice to uh, warn him about the bomb when he goes to open it. Yeah, and I did not warn him. So not only did I shoot him, and he was wounded. He opens the case, and he got blown up. And then Felix is gone, yeah. which uh, he's one of the people that can be on your team at the end of the game. So I don't know how much more he would have played into the story. Uh, from what I understand, uh, based on the choices I looked up, uh, he really wouldn't have played a part uh, outside of the ending battle. So he basically just leaves. Okay. Even if you shot him, actually. So, it, I mean, it just comes down to whether or not you let him die yeah. by telling him or not telling him yeah, about the yeah, bomb. Yeah, the big choice is the bomb, not the shooting. As a matter of fact, uh, if you didn't shoot him, and later when you get more bullets for uh, your gun, uh, you actually get a special uh, memento uh, bullet that sits in your inventory that says number one bullet. Oh, that's nice. But yeah, like, it, as soon as, like, that happened and, like, he's betraying you, I'm thinking, like, I saved my bullet. Please let me shoot him. Please let me shoot him. And, like, you pull your gun out on him, and he's like, you won't do it. And then the choice is shoot Felix or don't shoot Felix. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm shooting you, Felix. And I immediately press, like, X or whatever it was that was to shoot Felix. Yeah, uh, that, that's something else is that you had gamepad support for this, right? Yeah. Uh, the Twitch uh, version did not have gamepad support at all. 
I could not get it to uh, see my gamepad. And I was able to, you know, just uh, jerry rig uh, with uh, DS for Windows to be able to use the uh, keyboard inputs, but that's finicky at best. Uh, so th- that's another point against this game for me, technically. Yeah. The Twitch version um, sucks. <laughs> so then everybody, like, kind of meets up in the middle of the arena, like, well, we're fucked. We lost the money. Um, everybody's out to get us. Uh, yeah, know, and Reese being, do now? Reese being Reese falls down a hole. Yep, he falls down a hole. And realizes there's a uh, bunch of old Latin stuff. Yep. And is it at the end of this episode or the beginning of the next episode where everyone opens the things? Uh, everybody opens the things now. Okay, so yeah, everybody opens the things and, like, Sasha gets, like, a special gun. Yeah. And Vaughn gets, like, a basically, like, a calculator watch. Yeah, which you would think that would have come into play at some point. Yeah, it, it's only used in the montage uh, and at the opening of one of the episodes. Like, they're playing uh, Pandora Tetris, mm-hmm. or not Tetris, Pandora Pong on it. Um, But anyways, and then you and Fiona open the last one together. Yeah, very sweet, by the way. Which reveals the two pieces of uh, the Gordis project, which uh, is what basically the entire second episode is about. Is and really driven by the entire the well, the entire story is driven by this uh, little robot. Yeah, um, but you don't find out then, what it is. It, it just kind of snaps together. Yep, and then Handsome Jack is standing behind you, and he says something, and you're like, "Oh, sweet baby Jesus!" And you like freak out, and then the episode. Yep. Ends. Um, then we pick up an episode two, right where we left off. We get to see that moment from other people's perspective, like seeing Reese freaking yeah, out, but there's nothing there. Yeah, nobody knows like, what's going on. And he's like, yeah, oh, he just needs some air. Yeah. See, yeah, there he goes. So he wanders off. Um, so then you guys are investigating this little sort of secret vault room or whatever. Um, there's a computer you can't get access to and you have to dig out an eyeball of General, what's his name? General Pollux, something like that. Let me go to the second cha- chapter. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That was a very gross QTE. Yeah, I was like, oh, please don't make me like dig his eye out and like. But they make you dig his eye out, and you see it like from the perspective of his eye. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it made me cringe. Like I don't like medical stuff. Um, and that like really, especially like eye stuff. Like I have a thing with eyes. Like not, I get extra squeamish about that stuff. So, like that one, like had me like cringing really bad, but I got through it. So you pull his eye out and you use it well, to well, activate well, the retina well, scanner. That's the second time that you try to pull his eye out because the first time you're starting, Reese screams and you don't know why at this point, and you yeah. kind of spork his eye. <laughs> yeah, you stab the eye with a spork and like cut it in half. So you use that to get into the computer and you get some logs and one of the logs is from <laughs> Athena, but you don't know that yet. It just is like this like robed masked person who's like really scary. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'm going to hunt you down and kill you all every last one of you. And then you get the log from the general explaining like this holds the key. something like this holds the key to everything. And I have to put myself in the stasis pod right now. So when you find me, wake me yeah, up. Yeah, like, uh, Question. Why do you put the instructions on how to wake you up on a locked computer? Yeah, that's that requires your retina scanner to access. That didn't make any sense to me. But, I mean, he was supposedly dead. Uh, so. Well, no, he wasn't dead, supposedly. Well, they were like, no, he was totally dead. And, like, one of them's, I forget who it says, is like, yeah, he was dead. And the other one's like, I don't think he was dead. <laughs> well, he is now. But, yeah. Yeah, I, I think he was dead. Because I think he might have been alive in the stasis pod, but they didn't. They just opened it. They didn't go through the reactivation process. So I think he died whenever they opened the pod. But I, I don't or know. Or shortly he might thereafter. Have been alive. Um. But anyways, so you do that. Um, you complete that sequence, and then it cuts back to Reese, and you see like what was happening during this yeah, time. Yeah, he's having a and little he, fit with Handsome Jack. Yeah, he walks up the stairs and, like, down this hallway talking to Handsome Jack. And he's like, you're dead, Jack. And Jack's like, what? I'm not dead. And then he, like, tries to strangle yeah, you. Yeah, Handsome Jack like, oh, spends I can't a, touch yeah, you. Handsome Jack spends a long time trying to kill you. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, uh, more, uh, but then oh, I get about four episodes, the actually. Yeah. <laughs> then it shows the scream um, and like some more conversation. And you wind up walking backwards and falling off of a rail down onto the ground. And a giant splatter of blood. <laughs> yeah. And Reese is like, what? I, that obviously didn't happen. I would have died. <laughs> There wasn't. There was a little blood, but it wasn't like a blood explosion. Oh. Um. So yeah, another unreliable narrator joke. Um. But then you guys like have a little chat about. Wh- no, something happens. I forget. And Loaderbot comes and like gets you guys, all of you guys, and like you guys take off. Well, you're uh, wanting to get out of there before the bandits show back up. Right, so you go and you get in the caravan and you leave, um, and the Helios facility is shooting moonshots at you, which are basically like from space, like mortar rounds that feature in previous Borderlands games, um, and you're you're dodging those, uh, and there's some QTE stuff where you're having to drive the the truck or drive the caravan and, and John, uh, re- John ugly ass things chasing you. Yeah, that giant monster thing. Um, there's a there's one choice here. I don't know why this is a choice that's counted as one of the major choices, but it's whether or not you choose to send Sasha to go help Reese or not. Because um, you're being attacked by like these flying bird I, things. I imagine that, that like this uh, from Star probably Wars. ties into the uh, relationship thing again. Probably. Which I sent Sasha to go help Reese. Cause yeah, I'm same like, here, because he was having a lot more trouble. A- yeah, like it makes practical sense to do that because he doesn't have a gun. He's trying to drive and use his echo eye to spot where the the moonshots are going to land. Um, so it just made sense to send her up there to help him. But you just do a little bit of shooting. You just pull the right trigger a couple of times, and she like automatically shoots all of the Minoc creatures, whatever they're called. Um, Game and then cliff you, racers. Then you use the moonshot to destroy the giant monster, like. Uh, you you drive like right underneath it and time it right with one of the shots and it gets killed. And then your caravan gets pretty much hit by one yeah. and it rips the ass end off. Uh, yeah, but a caravan tur- uh, works perfectly well with just one wheel. Yeah. You use the turbo boost to escape and then this is where the montage kicks in for this episode because it's like, I think you get almost hit by a moonshot or something and everyone like starts to fly out. Uh-huh. And it is pretty cool. Like everyone's like, grabbing everybody by the arm or the the leg or the foot and uh or and fiona gets reese by his shoe and then his shoe comes off (laughs) and reese and vaughn fly out of the back of the caravan and at one point you guys have a discussion of like where you need to go and what you need to do so uh that comes into play a little bit later Um, but then you get reese and vaughn as they're walking through the desert and you can choose to tell vaughn about handsome jack did you tell vaughn yes i did too 78 Point four percent of people told Vaughn about Handsome Jack, um, and Vaughn, like you, call Yvette to try and get support, and she's like, "I can't help you right now. You guys have been found out. I'll do what I can." Um, and then this is where you discover that Vaughn is is weirdly buff because <laughs> he comes back and he's like peed on his shirt yeah. and wrapped it around his head to keep himself cool. Yeah, somebody has been really uh, yeah somebody has been watching Man vs. Wild a little too much. Yeah, um, but you guys go walking through the desert. <laughs> yeah, and Jack is uh, sitting there. It's like I- I'm distracted by how buff he is. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I could never uh, get uh, cut like that. It takes uh, too much time to take it for the world. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, but it's also at this point that it's very apparent that Yvette is not on your side because Vasquez immediately gets dropped on top of you. Yeah, you walk through the desert for a little while, and then like you see. What you think is a moonshot, and then you're like, oh, no, it's a supply thing. And then it turns out that it's Vasquez. Um, in a car. Uh, in a, in, in uh, uh, the red version of his car. Yeah, because the original one was black, and that's the one that you stole. Um, And he's got, like, this massive prototype shotgun. And there's a conversation that you can have with him. You know, some, some jokes abound. Uh, and then he has you, uh, you, tell, you guys yeah. dig your own graves. Yeah, I told him no. Uh, yeah, I, I dug, I just was like, I'm not, I don't know, you know, I'm just going to dig and see if an opportunity presents itself to like attack him. Well, I figured he Um, wouldn't uh, know how to operate that gun and I was right. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we went to attack him and he like 
you know, that he pulled the gun on us and went to shoot yeah. us and like, it didn't yeah, work. See, uh, like, see, for me, uh, I refused to shoot him or, or, or sorry, refused to uh, dig. And then I immediately threw the shovel at him and he dodged and broke the window of his car. Yeah, I, I didn't do that. Like whenever we were digging, there's like a moment where you can look at Vaughn and like try and give him a signal. And um, like he gets the signal, but you have to make it so obvious that Vasquez notices. And it's like you guys go to attack Vasquez together. And he's like, wait a minute. <laughs> I saw what you were doing. And he's like pointing the gun at you. Um, and then you can choose to like sass him or beg for your life or whatever. Um, and I didn't realize that the option was like going to be beg for your life. or um, it, it was kind of a vague worded, vaguely worded choice. Oh, the Fallout so, uh, 4 version of, uh, you know, word choices. Yeah, so I wound up accidentally, like, getting on my knees and begging for my life, and I thought it was, like, a more sarcastic type thing. And <laughs> Handsome Jack makes fun of you. He's like, wow, I, I already thought you didn't have any dignity, but this is a new <laughs> loaf, even for you. Um, And Vasquez is like, oh, that's the first good thing that you've done. I guess I'll forgive you and let you go back to digging your own grave. And then I was like, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that. And then he's like, well, I guess I'll just shoot you then. Yeah, Jack didn't but really can't uh, work the come gun. into play on, uh, in this scene for me because I immediately refused to dig and threw the shovel at his car. And and he was pretty much uh, determined to uh, – he would kill Vaughn and uh, yeah, leave him uh, in the shallow grave that Vaughn's already dug. And they already knew that there was something in my head, but – no idea how they would find out unless Vaughn was bugged. Granted, uh, Vaughn did say that he was trying to sell me out, but just to keep uh, Vasquez off my back, which I believed. Yeah, I, I believed that too. He, I found out about that, and I believed it. Um, but yeah, the, uh, Vaughn literally just found out, so there was no way to be able to hand it off. So it makes me feel like that. There's certain parts of this game that makes me feel like there's cut scenes. Yeah. Um, so did, did Han- you said Handsome Jack didn't really come into play. Did he not upgrade your Echo Eye and have you He did upgrade, hack- the, uh, and that was it. But there was no uh, uh, big uh, you know, conversation with Jack. It was uh, just, here, let me uh, upgrade your eye, and you, you get hacked something. And that was yeah, it. Yeah, there's a little bit of a conversation with Jack after I begged, because he made fun of me. And he was like, well, if you want help, I guess I can help you. Well, let me upgrade your Echo Eye so you can hack something. What what did you hack? I made the gun blow up in Vasquez's hand. Oh, I ran him over with his own car. You know, poetic justice. <laughs> nice. I, I saw that you could, like, hack some stuff on the car, and I was messing around with everything, like, just checking everything out, but I took too long, and so then Vasquez shot me in the face, <laughs> yeah, and I had, yeah, to, I had to restart that Yeah, part. I listened to him for a bit, and it sounded like he was starting to figure out the gun. It's, okay, accelerator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I, I blew up the gun in his hand, and then we took off running, which I I was like, I was thinking that hacking the car would either have it try and run him over or just drive his car away, and he'd chase it down. So I thought, okay, I'll blow the gun up in his hand, and then we'll steal the car. But it's like, no, we blew the gun up in his hand, and then we just ran. And I'm like, he's in a car. He's going to run us over. And I was trying to figure out what was going to happen, and then Loaderbot shows up and saves you. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, you're it's like, pr- Loaderbot, buddy. Yeah, it's pretty much uh, the same. Uh, I hacked the car. It ran him over, and... Uh, it destroys the gun in the process or damages the gun so much that he didn't even bother with it. Or he hadn't figured it out yet, which is also a possibility. And he's trying to run us over and Loaderbot shows up. Yeah. And then you have a little conversation with uh, Vaughn where he asks you to forgive him. Yeah, and I and did. They, like, the, the longer the conversation goes off, the more, like, bro, every bro, bro. says bro. And, bro, and, bro, and, bro, and you bro. find out that Fiona's, uh, yeah, making you go bro. Yeah, she's uh, sort of taken over and is making fun of you. And you, Reese is like, we do not talk like that. <laughs> but bro fist is a thing that comes up multiple times in the game. So, obviously, there's at least some of that. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's yeah, funny. Not, they, yeah, not they, they make silly facial expressions and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I bro fisted too. It's, it was like 80, how much is it? 80 88% or people. Yeah. Yeah, we bro fisted. Um, so then you choose whether or not which place you're going to go to. Um, and I chose to go to, is it called New Haven? Uh, uh, yeah, New Haven and Hollow Point. I went to New Haven Im- immediately because I figured that uh, they would uh, already be on the way. You know, it wouldn't take them yeah. that long to fix the, uh, the, ca- the caravan. I'm not yeah. sure what would happen if uh, I went uh, to Hollow Point. 
Okay, Old Haven. It's Old, Old Haven, Haven yeah. not New Haven. But yeah, that's where we went, was Old Haven. Okay, so we um, both went the same way. over to Fiona and Sasha. Um, and they go back to Hull Point to get the car fixed with uh, Scooter from Catch a Ride. Uh, and he apparently saw the death race with you guys. And he wants to sponsor you. So he agrees to fix your car for free if you let him be your sponsor. And there might be another way to do that uh, otherwise. But I just went ahead and went the easy way with the sponsorship. Yeah, same here. And then you can spend money on, like, upgrades for your car. And I say upgrades. It's all just, like, different cosmetic stuff. And then, and then like, the upgrades and the stats are all, you know, joking mm-hmm. written. Um, and I picked the one that was the, the like, wood panel wagon. Yeah, I went with the um, with the mate one. The blue and uh, white, I believe it is. Yeah. Which I, I would have thought that, you know, the, uh, uh, Scooter's face would have been on the side of that thing since he was the sponsor. But yeah, or catch a ride or something, mm-hmm. but there's not actually anything on it. Um, Feels like a little see. bit of a missed opportunity there. Yeah, and then you go back to your house, or well, Felix's like safe house, while you are uh, waiting on the caravan to be fixed. And you go back, and you discover that Felix left each of you a parting gift, which for you, uh, which you like, open your parting gift immediately, and it is a uh, upgrade for your little derringer. That allows you to choose between three elemental effects, mm-hmm. uh, lightning, toxic, and flame, uh, and another bullet. So that's that's well, good. Well, it's one bullet for each good. of them. Oh, I thought it was just one bullet, period. No, no, it's one bullet for each of them. Oh, okay. Um, but so then you have that. Uh, Sasha's really pissed at Felix and doesn't want to open her Very gift, so, so you hold on to it. Uh, you do have an opportunity and you can to choose to. Yeah. yeah, but I did not uh, peek. Same yeah. here. Uh, and that's 81.4%. Actually, a little shocked it's that high. Yeah, I figured most people would peak. Or at least, you know, it would be closer to 50-50. But maybe they respected the sisterhood, you know? Indeed. Uh, and then Sasha goes to make a sandwich, and she's frying it in a pan. Like you do. Um, Even though I don't, which I'm I, not sure how uh, the whole uh, sandwich thing works, because she talks about frying an egg on top. Um. How are you going to cook it on top of the sandwich? I assume she means she fries it with an egg on top, and you just flip it, and it would get cooked. Although when yeah. that shows up later on, and she makes those sandwiches, the egg is on top, and it looks pretty raw. Yeah. So maybe she eats a raw egg on top of her fried sandwich. I don't know. But these uh, two, uh, these two uh, thugs show up, and they're going to capture you guys and bring you in. Yeah, which uh, um, yeah, they're very ineffective at. Yeah, and they're like, why are you frying your sandwich? And she's like, I put an egg on, I like to put an egg on top of it. And one of the guys is like, fair, I can respect that, or something like that. And I'm like, you know, I kind of like you, even though you're, like, one of the bad guys. But I get that, I like that. I, and I can't remember his name. Um, uh, one of them is Croker, and the other is Finch. Which one is the guy with the glasses? I, I believe that's Finch. Yeah, so you get an opportunity to shoot him. Yeah, that's the, yeah, gun. that's Finch. Yeah, I shot him with a, a lightning round. Uh, yeah, light- <laughs> I did lightning as well. I figured uh, he was talking about how he's big and bad with cybernetics and everything. Let's fry him. Yeah, that was my thought too. I- I'm a little sad. <laughs> you get to shoot him twice. I was hoping that you get to shoot him three times to- for all three effects. You can you get to shoot him three times in the game. Uh, oh, wait, I- but you didn't do the Vault Hunter fight. Okay, I- you get to shoot him again in the Vault all right, Hunter fight. All right, so I missed the third shot. Yeah. Yeah, I wound up shooting him with all three effects. Oh, now, now uh, I'm disappointed. I should have said I was a vault hunter. I, I fi- yeah. I figured, you know, that would have been, you know, a bad thing to uh, admit. Granted, it does cause a fight, so, you know, I was right on that. Yeah. Um. Uh. So, anyways, you, uh, let's see, when you shoot him, Sasha hits the guy with a, like, use that opportunity to hit the other guy with a flying hand. Yeah, complete waste of sandwich. Escape. Yeah. You guys escape and head back to the catch a ride, uh, but you're being chased by uh, again. You yeah, don't know hood, it's Athena, well, well, but it is fi- Athena, hooded figure. Which I didn't play the pre sequel and didn't really look into it. So, uh, yeah, I didn't know who it was at all. And yeah, even when I'm told who it is, it's like, who are you exactly? Yeah. So if, uh, Athena chases you back to the catch a ride, um, and you go inside, and then she comes in after you. And Athena's girlfriend is the Scooter's, like, new 
um, uh, franchise owner, assistant, franchise because owner, Sco- whatever, Scooter's like, figured out the uh, the ability to franchise, and he's talking about all the paperwork. Yeah, which uh, so Athena shocking comes in. that yo, there's paperwork on Pandora. Yeah, so Athena comes in. And it's like, you were just chasing me. And her girlfriend's like, oh, I know she wasn't doing that because she's not in that life anymore. <laughs> and I was like, Athena like is like giving me the stink eye. Oh, like, yeah, she totally yeah. chased me. And it that well, no, what I like, I was like, okay, maybe I can use this to my advantage. So I was like, you know what? It wasn't her. I'm I was just like scared. Somebody was chasing me, but it, you know, I don't think it was her. And Athena's like, you know, it's like, thank you. But then I took her shield. <laughs> yeah, I took her shield as well. Granted, I don't think yep. that really matters. Yeah, I don't think it matters. Because she immediately like takes take it back. Shield. Oh, no. I, she didn't take it back. I, like, took it and put it in the caravan yeah. with well, me. So well, I have well, no well, idea me, how she gets it back later. I, I, I think she just uh, raids the caravan. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Because uh, she but, uh, during that fight, she pretty much immediately has it again. Either that or that's another, you know, cut scene. Yeah. Because, like I said, there's a lot um, of things in this game that really don't make a lot of sense. Even for a Borderlands game. Yeah. So then we cut back to Reese, and Reese is in Old Haven with Loderbot and Vaughn, and there's like a teeny tiny yeah, his, bit of like a puzzle yeah, his, where you have to figure out how to... Yeah, sorry, I was going to say his best friend and Vaughn. Yeah. There's a teeny tiny bit of a puzzle where you have to figure out how to open up the, the facility, um, but I mean, it takes just a few minutes, and you've got that place open. Mm-hmm. And then um, August shows up with a bunch of guys... And they're like, so, we finally tracked you down. <laughs> you, you know, lying double-crosser people. Then you cut back to Fiona uh, and Sasha as they show up. And they're like, oh, this is, isn't a good thing. Like, there's all this shit that's obviously gone down. Like, there's some some dead people and uh, you've already opened up the facility. And they try to sneak up on August and his men. And you think, okay, we're going to sneak up. We're going to do a bit of combat. We're going to get rescued. Nope. But Vasquez shows up about that time, um, and then you guys wind up captured. Uh, and there's this whole sequence where you're having exposition between Fiona and August in one hallway and Vasquez and Reese in the other as you're walking down the hallway and they're essentially monologuing to you. Fiona's asking questions about the relationship between August and Sasha, and Vasquez is like trying to lay like corporate knowledge on you, mm-hmm. but <laughs> Handsome Jack is like, Telling yeah, you information I, yeah, I, about Vasquez. Yeah, I remember this guy. Oh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Uh, and he calls him like Wallet Head or something because he used to take like money and like lick it and stick it to the back of Vasquez's mm-hmm. head because he's was bald before he got like hair implants or something. Uh, and then you can choose to call him like Wallet Head. And then he's like, How do you know that? <laughs> Never mind. I was just trying to help you. And I'm like, Whatever, asshole. You weren't trying to help me. But um, then you put the pieces together. And you get the orb, um, the orb, which you initially you think is the vault key. You're like, okay, this must be the vault key. You're trying to figure out how to use it for leverage, uh, because but you wind up like nearly dropping it off the edge, and then the basis security like shows up. Yeah, which and then not you have really the sure how the security goes off in the beginning. Yeah, I'm not sure either. But uh, yeah, you get your final choice, these- which is. Uh, okay, shit's going down. You need to get out of there. And uh, Handsome Jack is saying, oh, l- let me into your systems. I could hack everything. Uh, and Fiona's uh, uh, pretty much just has one of the homemade grenades from Felix's stash. And yeah. it comes down to a matter of who do you trust, uh, Jack or Fiona? Who did you trust? Uh, well, it seemed like trusting Jack would have been a bad idea. So I went with Fiona, even though she didn't really seem to have an idea of what to do. Yeah, I trusted Jack. So, okay. So we might have some a very different way with how well, the start of Chapter yeah, 3 the, plays yeah, out. Yeah, the start of Chapter 3 is pretty much uh, full-on stealth uh, missions uh, for me. Oh, it's full-on combat for Jack. Um, okay, let's let's take a short break. Uh, I have, I've been talking a lot, drinking a lot of water, so I need to take a quick break. But that's the end of Chapter 2. So this is a good place to to take a break between chapters two and three. So I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick. I will be right back. And then we can talk about how different this went for us. Okay, and we're back with, uh, well, episode three. And, well, since things are so different, I'll go first on this one. So 
the Felix grenades are all flashbangs that he's made to distract. So for Jonas' plan is essentially throw down a flashbang and then run. Pretty much how Fiona operates. She's a, a lot of not so much planning, but yeah, doing things on the fly and winging it and see how things turn out. So it starts with you going down this giant shaft that uh, was just happened to be under a trap door uh, at the, right where the sphere is held or the halves of the sphere. And it's essentially just a series of QTEs uh, dodging turret shots. And at one point, uh, you actually lose your hat. I'm not sure if you lose your hat in the other sequence. Do you? Nope. So you keep your hat. Nope, dur- don't lose your hat. Do you keep your hat during the entire game? Yep. Okay, so that, that's a, a kind of an indicator here because uh, in this sequence, uh, you actually have to throw your hat uh, in between two turrets and they shoot one another. And she's like, but I like this hat. <laughs> and, and, yep, I got to keep the and, hat. The and Reese's uh, 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 argument was, well, when we open the vault, you'll be able to buy all the hats you want. <laughs> and she's, this is true, <laughs> and throws the hat. But it's a pretty much a long sequence of uh, cut of uh, QTEs uh, with Loaderbot actually killing Dumpy. <laughs> oh my god, you missed the best Loaderbot scene in the whole... Okay, when it's my turn, I'll tell. Uh, well, uh, there's not much here. It's pretty much uh, you uh, get in uh, uh, to that uh, sequence where I guess you would uh, meet Dumpy. Loaderbot kills Dumpy and uh, starts kicking ass, and you eventually just run out. There's not a lot that I could recall that... Uh, outside of just being irritated at some of the uh, quick time events, because uh, once again the errors aren't very informative. Yeah. Okay. So two questions. Question number one: Does Vasquez get his own arm blown off in that sequence? No, Vasquez does not lose his arm. Uh, he is okay. uh, uh, intact up until after the escape. So Vasquez is not uh, right. Vasquez yeah. is not disarmed. Okay. And did you, did, since you used the other flashbang, does that mean that you didn't get the unreliable narration bit where she blows? No, Sasha's, I had three flashbangs. I, I used the second. Oh, okay. I only had two flashbangs. Uh, then, uh, then that's another uh, diversion is that uh, I was able to find three flashbangs in the midst of uh, Felix's uh, place. So, which I, I know yeah. one is hidden with the uh, with the uh, last gifts. And you find another one on the bench, and there's a third one off on the far left. Okay, I didn't find one on the bench. I got the one with the one from the first safe, and one from the yeah where the gifts were hidden. Okay, so I had a third uh, flashbang, and actually never used the third flashbang. It was a uh, used in the unreliable narrator, but it was never actually used. So. Uh, so that's why the third flashbang was there. I was wondering about that, actually. Yeah. Uh, okay, so there's... Uh, on the, the trust Jack portion of this, uh, Jack... You let Jack take control of your implants, and he hacks the entire system, and you gain control of all of the security bots. Um, and uh, essentially, I mean, you gain control of the entire facility. So you you shut down that big shield... It's um, the big shield window between the control room and then the room where you've actually assembled uh, Gordas. Mm-hmm. Um, and the shield goes down, and you order the security bots to start attacking all of um, August's men and Vasquez. Um, and you get to take control of a couple of the security bots and, like, choose targets. And Vasquez might, like, if you don't pick him as one of the targets, like, you can choose to shoot August or Vasquez with the security bots uh, and I picked Vasquez cause fuck that guy. And uh, it blew his arm off. Um, and he dropped his shotgun, his, his fancy schmancy shotgun and Fiona actually picks it up and uses it in the battle. Like you don't take direct control of Fiona, but you just like see her using it to shoot people in the room. Um, and then Sasha like grabs her SMG back and is fighting. Uh, but uh, after a few minutes, like Jack takes over everything and he's like, and Reese is like, oh, man, I was actually enjoying that. And Jack's like, don't worry, I saved one for you. He's <laughs> he's perfect for you. And it's Dumpy. And Dumpy's like a really tiny security bot. Um, but then you take control of Dumpy and use Dumpy to take out a few guys. 
Um, and he has more, um, just like stunning attacks. Fiona winds up shooting Dumpy in the chaos and like damages him. Oh, poor Dumpy. Um, well, you fix Dumpy and he comes back later. And if you've got him, you can use him for a couple of choices later on in the game and to like help you with some stuff. Um, yeah, but see, that would require me cheating on Litterbot. But anyways, like Jack, um, is just like causing chaos and you're like, well, we got to get out of here. Um, and we got to break down the door. Uh, Cause it was like a special security door or something and Jack couldn't open the door. And so you're like, Loderbot help. And there's in, you know, in the center of the room, there's the Atlas statue yeah, at, like yeah, holding the world. Yeah, uh, that happens in the uh, uh, sneak out portion as well. Once th- thanks okay, to- where Loderbot grabs the ass cheeks and pushes it over. Yeah, Well, yeah, he grabs the ass cheeks, pushes it over, but you have to shoot the ankle. Yeah. Yeah. That happens in the sneak out as well. But I figured okay. by that point, it probably reconverged. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's got to be one of the best scenes in the whole game. But so he pushes the statue over and the giant globe like blows through the door and you guys all escape and Valerie is is outside. Um and she extends a hand to Fiona Didn't take it. to help her up. I took the hand cuz I was like I don't know who this person is but they're offering to help me up so I'll let him help me. Uh up. well, she seemed pretty bad from the beginning. That's the, in no See, she looks like she could have been a vault hunter. And I was like, okay, is this a vault hunter that I'm not aware of from like a DLC or a new character? And then it turns out she's a bad guy. But, you know, she, I mean, I thought she might have been a vault hunter. Because she she feels kind of like a female version of Brick. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to feel that. And strong and massive she is. And there's a joke about that later on in Chapter 3 where, like, you can't even pick up her rocket launcher. And, like, she uses that to hold you down, like, Thor's hammer style from the Marvel <laughs> movies. But uh, she's outside, and it's very clear that she's in charge. Um, and she kills Vasquez. She shoots him in the chest. Because Vasquez is, like, trying to bargain or something. Well, and she's well, like, you, he says, well you have a choice here before that. Is that uh, she wants to know, you know, uh, who's beh- who was at fault. And you could uh, blame August or you could blame Vasquez. And pre- right. I blame Well, Vasquez. Vasquez always dies in this scene. It's pretty much, uh, okay. if you blame August, August shifts the blame. And uh, Vasquez starts running his mouth and runs it a little too much and gets killed. But yeah. I blame Vasquez. Fuck that guy. Yeah, fuck that guy. So she kills him, blows a big hole in his chest. Um, But also, another reason why I didn't trust Valerie right, right away was you was told uh, to watch out for Valerie. Female name. Unknown female person. Huh. Yeah. I, I guess I just didn't put two and two together on that one. I don't know. But um, it it looks like you're about to, you know, lose. And then Athena shows up and kicks the ass of all the bandits um, and Valerie. Yeah, and she, and, and she yelled at me because I kind of turned her in and she, uh, says, well, I was supposed to help you. And uh, yeah, I, she she yelled at me, too, but not about me turning her in. She just was like, what are you doing, you dummy? Like, I'm here to help you. Didn't you realize that before? Uh, yeah, I got and sassy. And like, well, you were kind of chasing yeah. me down the street. Yeah, I got sassy with her as well. And uh, she got sassy back because, you know, she I was surrounded by bad guys. So I can't understand why. Yeah. Um. But so then she like is like, okay, I'm actually here to help you. And Felix hired me and, you know, yada, yada. Um. So some basic exposition happens. Then uh, Gordis, uh, you figure out that Gordis has an on yeah, switch. Yeah, Reese, and you turn yeah, Reese has been on. sitting there for 20 minutes and finds the on switch. And finds the, uh, the well, the on switch to the cutest robot in Borderlands uh, ever. Yep, and it's the same voice actress who does, um, ah, shit, what's the little girl from The Walking Dead and the little kid, uh, Tom? Toad from, yeah. I, I thought yeah, the, the, I thought the voice sounded familiar, but it, it didn't quite click as much as Kronk's did. Yeah, it's got sort of a like a sort of like a robot uh, uh, the glass thing effect, added you know, the top uh, the, uh, yeah. uh, uh, make it sound artificial. Uh but yeah, glass is but I mean, or, or sorry, not glass. Uh, uh Gordis is always so cheerful. Yeah, she's always so happy and cute and loving and never <sighs> once, no matter what happens, does she lose her positive happy spirit, which I I found adorable. Yeah, and also she's not as greeting as Claptrap. Yeah. 
Uh, it's yeah. uh, it's like a female version of Claptrap without uh, the annoyance. Yeah, they figured out how to pull out the funny of Claptrap, but leave the annoying with Claptrap. Because Claptrap could be funny at times in the original game, but he always took everything too far. You know, made the joke unfunny every time. But, you know, they managed to get it just right with Gordas. Um, but everyone is, like, nice to Gordas. Uh, and- well, Fiona is... Uh- uh, one of her choices is, oh, you're so cute. <laughs> yeah, I actually said that. She's like, you're so cute. And Gorgeous is like, oh, thank you. You're, you You look, does she say gorgeous or beautiful? She's like, she compliments yeah. her back. Yeah. Yeah, and she's just a slow ball with uh, one wheel, uh, very Claptrap-like on it. But yeah. it's about, I would say, half the size of Claptrap uh, initially. Yeah. Because yeah, she's uh, pretty small at the beginning. Because at this point, uh, the entire uh, she is the MacGuffin. She uh, is uh, what you need to open what you find out to be the vault of the Traveler, which teleports all yep. across the universe. But her purpose was to be built to hold uh, the vault uh, on Pandora and fight the Guardian of the uh, vault. Because vaults also have monsters. Because of course they do. I mean that's I mean that New game logic. I, well, that's kind of the point of the vault is to hold the monsters yeah but they don't know that uh, lore wise uh, uh vaults are only thought to be uh, you know treasure troves uh, guarded by monsters not the other way around yeah and you can get some sweet loot when you kill the, the monsters but yeah but unfortunately you have to kill them over and over and over again for the sweet loot because the sweet loot has a very low drop chance <laughs> yeah i love it in the end whenever you kill the the traveler uh all of the loot laying on the ground and it looks exactly yeah. like it does in the main borderlands games like they do that repeatedly like occasionally you can open loot crates to get money and stuff out of them for fiona and you'll occasionally see items that you have to pick up and they have that same sort of like beam of light effect on them uh, and i like how that they just like that's a thing in this universe like that's just how it is loot drops from from dead things and i'm surprised they didn't have felix crates. respawn then yeah, I wondered why they didn't do that. But then again, you um, run into the problem with Roland. Yeah. Although, didn't they solve that because of Hyperion? Like, Hyperion's the one who owns that technology, and so he just couldn't respawn? I always just uh, took it as a game mechanic that wasn't in the world. But but then you have that one quest uh, where you're supposed to kill yourself. Yeah. I don't know. Video game logic. Ding. Um, but anyway, so then the montage, the opening montage for this yeah, one. Yeah, because uh, the, well, 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 the reason why the montage is that you have to travel a long way because Gorgeous needs upgrades. Uh, she needs the other parts. Atlas was trying to figure out how to open this vault because they were losing the war. Uh, and uh, Well, that and Athena was killing everybody, but that's beside the point. Yeah. Uh, but they, uh, the uh, vault was a last-ditch effort. And different parts of Gorgeous was being worked on uh, at the same time, on different uh, facilities on the planet, uh, to try to complete her faster in order to open up the vault to get sweet loot to uh, you know be able to get that boost, which didn't work. Yeah, um, so it's a it's a road trip montage, which is adorable. Um, and there's lots of like there's one where they're playing like the Pandoran version of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, and Gorge and... is driving at one point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, there's the, there's and a there's, point where the caravan's broken down and uh, Fiona's under uh, the uh, under it trying to fix it with uh, Reese holding out his hand with the uh, the echo com uh, to scooter telling her how to fix it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then there's like lots of little shots of Loaderbot and Gordis like sitting yeah. on the roof. And Echobot, all, or not Echobot, Loaderbot always is, like, sitting still, and Gordis is, like, constantly, like, <laughs> moving around and in different positions in every shot. Yeah. Oh, Gordis like, is a low know, ball of energy. Yeah. And they do, they show really well that the relationship between the two of them has grown via that montage, mm-hmm. because in the next scene where they're together and, and talking, like, they're just talking like two friends. Mm-hmm. Um, like, once it finishes with the montage, you're playing as Reese, and you're having a conversation with Jack. And uh, I think it's Athena is standing there and she's like, what are you, what are you doing? And you do have like the option to tell her, but if you pick the option, like Jack takes over your, your robot arm and like smacks you in the face. 
It's like, don't tell yeah, her. I didn't, uh, she won't take yeah, it well. I figured telling Athena would be a bad idea, so I didn't tell her. Yeah, I, I told everybody by the end. Uh, like, Athena I, was I just, the only person I, I didn't tell, tell because tell. Uh, Athena seems like the murdering type. Because she is. Yeah, well, well, Jack doesn't let you tell Athena. Like, you try to tell her, and he, he like, slaps you in the face. And then if you try and tell her again, he, like, punches you in the face with the robot arm. Mm-hmm. Um, and you get a, your face will remember that <laughs> thing. Um, but yeah, he's like, you shouldn't, shouldn't do that. And you're like, well, I got to talk to you, Jack. So I guess we'll just go up on the roof. So you go up on the roof and you talk to Jack and have this long conversation with him. Um, and I think, isn't one of the choices you decide whether or not to trust Jack? Let me move on. Uh, I didn't get that, but then again, maybe it's because you already trusted Jack or no, it was work with Jack and I didn't. It, yeah, it's you and so myself and sixty two point seven percent of players made an alliance with Jack. Yeah, let's see. Uh, uh, this is episode three. Of, I, yeah, I refuse to work with Jack, uh, and thirty seven percent for that. Yeah, yeah, I, I chose. to But work then again, for, maybe at this point, yeah, you know, uh, people saw that maybe Jack has changed. I didn't trust him. Yeah, I wasn't really sure that I trusted him, but I was like, you know, maybe he can help us, and if I, you know, may at least make him think that I'm well, well, okay. on his side or whatever, he'll maybe, help us in Maybe the end. this is the, the difference. I played through the end of Borderlands 2. Well, I mean, I know what the ending of Borderlands 2 no, is. No, but you didn't, didn't see, yeah, but you didn't see how fucking crazy he is. No, I know how crazy he is. Like, I didn't play the ending, but I have read and then watched some YouTube videos about the ending of the game just so that I knew what was going on in the world. Like, I know he's insane, and I figured at some point he was going to betray me, but I thought, well, if I can at least, you know, like, air quotes, be on his side, maybe he'll help us before that happens. Well, my thing was, I figured that the more you trusted him, the harder it would be to try to get rid of him at some point. Yeah, I don't, and I don't think that that was... Just because of the way that the story plays out, I I don't think that that was the case at all. Maybe. Well, well we already had a divergence. Were, yeah. Yeah, we've already had a divergence. So there might be, particularly when you get to his office in Chapter 4, yeah, which, that might be pretty different. Yeah, which uh, that was the one of the parts that it either bugged out or whenever I clicked, it clicked the wrong thing because I, it completely ignored what I said. Yeah. Um, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. But so anyways, you go through this road trip montage, and then you show up at the place, uh, at an Atlas facility, yeah. where the, the upgrade is supposed to be. And you spend some time searching the facility, trying to figure out how you get yeah, in. Yeah, this Garden of well, Eden uh, in the uh, middle of a uh, frozen wasteland, essentially. Yeah. Um, and you eventually come to the control center. Uh, yep. And you're starting to realize... Somebody's been here recently. The fruit's been, uh, yeah, there's a recent bite taken out of the, what was it, the Drake fruit? Yeah. Uh, and there's some fresh, like some freshly trained clothes yeah. laying out, like maybe like the dry. Uh, yeah, something. and there's a map. And uh, then this uh, guy shows up uh, with glasses and uh, he's saying, well, I just found this place uh, very recently. Well, how did you draw a map then? And you threatened to tear it up and he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh. oh, I'm trying to remember how my first interaction with him went. I didn't point out the map. I pointed out the clothes. Well, uh, I pointed out the map and threatened to tear it up, and he freaked out. Yeah, he. I didn't do that. I just pointed out the clothes and called him out on a couple of things that, like, that he responded to, and we're like, "Yeah, that obviously can't be true." Like, there's fresh fruit here. There's clothes, etc. Um, and then uh, he tells you. Like, where the security room is and where the upgrade for Gordas is supposed to be. And your party splits up again. And Reese and Sasha and um, Athena and Fiona go to do things. Reese is like, I'm gonna, I can hack the security system and shut it down. So you and Sasha head off there. And then Fiona and Athena head to go actually get the upgrade yeah, and Vaughn, itself. Uh, uh, hangs back to start reading through the computer and keep an eye on uh, the, the, well, Hobo. The scientist guy. His name's Cassius. Well, well, they don't know his name at first. Yeah, but I'm just like, you know, if so we can refer to him. His name is Cassius. Uh, but so anyways, then, you know, you there's some, 
back and forth where you're playing between Fiona and Reese. Uh, and Reese with Sasha, um, you have a chance to, you know, flirt with her Again, and be nice, yeah. that uh, sort a, of thing. A flower. Uh, uh, she yep. uh, uh, notices some flowers and you have the option to pick one and give it to her. Which yeah, did you? Yeah, do that? I did. I thought it was going to be a more friendly gesture, not a you know this huge romantic gesture. Yeah, you know, putting it in her hair. Uh, oh, I was. I totally figured it would be something romantic. Like, uh, I was no, going hard for the for crushing on. I, her. I, I was figuring at this point that, uh, yeah, uh, he was going to be so incompetent <laughs> that he was going to do something. Granted, uh, something did happen, but it was after the fact. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, Reese's thing is he's coming out of his shell and he is becoming a more competent person as you, we go through. Both of them are, just in different yeah, ways. Yeah, but I wasn't expecting it to be, uh, yeah, uh, uh, this soon. Yeah, but then the flower, like, squirts him with yeah. something. And these little floating jellyfish things turn uh, to go from blue to yeah. red. So they now, they're bad guys. And they're trying to chase you down. And you're like, oh, thankfully you move slow. And then you get to this <laughs> elevator so that you can And the elevator up. moves slow, too. And it's like, oh, of course, the elevator moves slow. Which, by the way, like, you're initially on this catwalk, and then the catwalk breaks, um, and you guys fall down to the ground. Uh, did you choose to, ho- or did you refuse to let Sasha go? Yeah, I refuse to let her go. 95%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah um, but it, uh, and the joke is like, oh, you're actually only like a well, couple well, of feet off well, the ground. It, it drops, and then it drops again, and drops again. Uh, so by the time uh, you get a chance to uh, have her let go... She's uh, about six inches off the ground. Yeah. And she makes fun of him. And he's like, to be fair, you told me not to look down. <laughs> and But so anyways, then then the flower thing happens. And then the jellyfish chase after you. Uh, and then it switches over to Fiona, who has been given uh, an upgrade from Athena yeah. for her gun. And then bullets. Um, more bullets. So now you have infinite bullets, basically, with with the gun. At least as far as I could tell. Um, Green, you don't get to use it that a, often. Uh, au contraire, sir. I got to use it quite a lot. <laughs> um, this Part of this probably comes down to in this chapter when I announced that yeah. I was a vault hunter. Um, and then basically every opportunity I had where I could shoot somebody, I shot somebody. So, anyways. With um, the renegade route. You know, sh- she's trying to teach you how to be a vault hunter, I think. And it involves shooting everyone. Uh, and... There's this giant, like, Venus flytrap-like plant that she, like, basically shoves you into and is like, okay, kill it. Um, And so you kill it, and there's a a few different, a couple different ways you can actually kill it. And I chose to, like, shoot its two little bulb things and then slam it into this plant. Yeah, she also gets this uh, thing where she's able to visualize what happens. And, you know, that's your, it's very much like the Wolf Among Us where you have that choice. But she's sitting there talking to herself the entire time. (laughs) Yeah, which I thought, like, like they make fun of that, too, which I thought was funny. She's a visual thinker. What does that even mean? I, I, I know, like, the, the I know words what mean. those words mean, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but not together like that. But so you kill the plant monster, um, and she's like, see, I knew you could do it, and you're like, yay, I knew I could do it. And then head over towards the facility where the uh, the upgrade is, and the security system is still active because Reese and... Sasha fell off the catwalk. Yeah, I had a detour. Been, yeah, had a detour and have been running away from the squid monsters. Um, but then they get inside. There's a little mini game, uh, a hacking mini game, which is just like um, you match the correct pairs and then you shut down the security system. Uh, then you jump back over to Fiona um, and Athena, who Athena's having a conversation with her girlfriend, whose name I can't remember. Um, and I didn't look that up for the last episode. But, uh, anyways, her, her, she's having a conversation with her girlfriend and her girlfriend, like, has caught her in a lie about, like, she's like, oh, it shouldn't take you this long to make a delivery. Yeah, she forgot to turn and off Athena's... the echo as well. Yeah, and you find that out later. Um, but you have a conversation with Athena and you can encourage Athena to, like, tell the truth or to lie to her. I think one of the options might have been, like, to break up with her or something. And I encourage her to tell the truth. That's not one of the choices that's tracked, is it? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, no, it's not. But I, I told her that she should tell the truth. Um, and then later on, that helps uh, with her relationship. Yeah, that um, didn't actually come up to me. I don't, or at least I don't recall it. Um, but, uh, so then you, 
I, I shot the turret. Um, I think you can just wait, and when Reese like shuts down the system, the turret will shut yeah. down. But I, I actually shot the turret, so we could just walk in. And it's like I shot. I, I chose to shoot the turret, and then like I look over at Athena, and I'm like, "Come on, I shot the turret. Let's go." Um, so then we walked inside, and the security system on the inside attacks you. Uh, it cuts back over to Reese. I think I got those a little bit out of order because I think you do that and then walk inside and the, the turrets inside are still shooting at you. And then it cuts to Reese and you disable the security system. Then back to Fiona. They grab the upgrade and go to leave. Um, and you all reconvene back at that main facility uh, where Cassius is. Um, and you discovered like going through the computer files that he's actually an Atlas scientist when you were shutting down the security system. And then when you yeah, get the back, the last one on uh, Athena's kill list, it turns out. Yep. When you get back, you can confirm that with Vaughn. And then like you, someone says something to Athena and he's like, yes, I'm the last scientist. And Athena goes to kill him and you can choose to either intervene or uh, let agree. it happen. Yeah. Um, and I chose to like agree with her. Like I was like, yeah, no, you should totally get revenge and kill. I see. Guy. I didn't kill him. Well, I mean, he, she doesn't kill him. Like, no matter what, she doesn't kill him because at that point Valerie shows up. Um, but you can, you know, did you choose to intervene? Yeah, I intervened. Or, okay, I did not intervene. I was like, yeah, I agree. You should totally kill him. And Athena's about to do it, and then Valerie shoots out the window with the rock. Yeah, see, uh, Valerie does show up, but uh, Cassius uh, uh, doesn't uh, get nearly killed and uh, disappears with Vaughn. Yeah, that happens. No, that does not happen. Um, so that's not exactly how it happens. He shows back up with Vaughn. So Valerie shoots out the window and everyone's scattered and it looks like Reese is about to get killed. And then Vaughn like jumps out of a tree onto Valerie and, uh, like starts strangling her and actually like wrestles her to the ground. And he's like, run, I got this. You go get Gordas. Cause you know, Gordas ran away and August is chasing her in the truck. So you run and you start chasing the truck on foot. <laughs> um, but so then like Cassius shows back up later and he's captured Vaughn um, and uses him as a bargaining chip so that uh, huh. Valerie will let him leave. Okay, so it was completely different for me. Uh, okay. Vaughn and Cassius pretty much just disappear in the uh, scuffle. Uh, and uh, they don't show up again till the very end at all. Like the very end of the yeah. game? Holy shit. So you didn't have Vaughn for... I didn't have Vaughn till episode five. Damn. So, uh, okay. Well, this game has a lot more differences than... Yeah, I was expecting this to be pretty linear, but no, Vaughn was gone. Yeah. Uh, he was uh, hanging out yeah. with Cassius. Uh, uh, pretty much in the scuffle, The uh, those two just disappear and uh, yeah, run off. Uh, I believe yeah. August uh, mentions that he tried to get a hold of Vaughn, but yeah, just lost him at some point. Yeah, no, Cassius, uh, Vaughn, like, tackles Valerie and saves Reese, uh, and I'm trying then, to remember who, least, uh, and what happened yeah, I'm trying to remember, I, I know, this, uh, someone, uh, gets, ta uh, tackles, uh, Valerie, but it wasn't Vaughn in my case, he was just gone. Okay. Um, but then, yeah, he, he disappears, and Cassius shows back up with him and uses him as a bargaining chip with Valerie. Um, so that he can escape. Yeah, Vaughn was no or was uh, no show, and, um, and everybody. Uh, there was a scene where they were talking about, uh, yo, uh, do you think Vaughn made it? And yeah, I said, yeah, he he made it. So, well, when we get there, I'll explain what happens with Vaughn because Vaughn does disappear from the story later on. Um, but I believe it's in chapter four, the beginning of chapter four, the end of chapter three. It's whenever you go to get. Vasquez for the disguise, uh, and Vaughn is yeah, with you for okay, that. Okay, Vaughn was not with me for that. That's the beginning of chapter four, I believe. Yeah, he's, uh, he's no, 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 with no. That's that. the end of chapter three because the beginning of chapter four was uh, the Armageddon uh, sequence. Right. So yeah, he's he's with you for that, and then you ask him, like he asks you, like, do you think I should try and escape or not? And I was like, dude, if you can escape, you should totally try and escape. Uh, so he then he escapes like he bites the ear off of uh, a guy with the glasses uh, <laughs> i forgot his name again but he bites his ear Finch. off and then escapes 
Yeah, Finch. He bites Finch's ear off. Wow, and then Finch had a lot worse time with in your story than he did in mine. He just got shot twice in mine. Yeah. So, anyways, so the, like, there's chaos. Everybody's split up. Um, Fiona is tied up, uh, like she's upside down, like her legs are tied, and she's hanging from a branch. And Finch and what's his name mm-hmm. are there, the two of them. Uh, and Sasha shows up, and you you wind up fighting them. And Fiona's a total badass. Of course. Uh, she goes to shoot them, like pull out her gun, and they're like, "Oh, do you think we were stupid that we wouldn't <laughs> that we would leave you with your little pistol there?" But she winds up doing some pretty badass yeah, stuff swinging, and swinging yeah. around on the rope yeah, and swinging around upside down. Um, but I recovered my gun during that scene, and I shot Finch again. Yeah, uh, yeah that that was um, my second time shooting him. I believe it was corrosive this time. Yeah, I, I also shot him the second time with corrosive. <laughs> And then the th- and then the third time I shot him, I shot yeah, him. Yeah, the fire. third time, if but, it uh, popped up for me, it would have been fired, but I didn't uh, get it because I didn't, uh, yeah, proclaim myself a vault hunter. Yeah. Um. So then, uh, you go through that, and there's essentially a, a chase sequence where Reese and Sasha and Loderbot are trying to save. Um, Gordis after she's gotten her upgrade, yeah. and now she has legs, yeah, uh, <laughs> she, which she refers to lovingly as her ham hocks. Yeah, which uh, first time Litterbog uh, sees her, it's like, nice gams. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, thank you. <laughs> I laughed so hard. God, they're adorable. Um, but yeah, there's, there's chasing, you know, chasing happens. A lot of QTE action type stuff, climbing on vehicles, punching guys yeah, off. Yeah, can we replace Claptrap uh, with Gordis, please? That would be awesome. Shooting. Loderbot gets his like lower half blown off, but he's like running with his yeah. arms, and he's apparently incredibly fast with just his <laughs> arms. Well, well um, he's Loderbot. He's uh, powered by awesome. Yeah. You, you ride him like a, a valiant steed <laughs> into battle. Yeah, and this uh, entire time, uh, I've uh, put the skin on him where he has the tuxedo, so he has this little mustache. Yeah. Um, but during all of this for Fiona, uh, Athena sh- is... You meet back up with Athena, um, and Brick and Mordecai show up, Vault Hunters from Borderlands 1 and 2, to attack Athena. Um, and Brick, like, catches you off guard, and Athena initially starts fighting him, and then Mordecai starts shooting at her, um, and you go to help her, uh, take care of Mordecai, and you both wind up falling out of a tree. And I think it's at this point. It might have been like right. Yeah, th- yeah. They ask who you start. are, and I can't remember what I said, but I didn't say I was a vault hunter. Yeah, and I was like, I'm a vault hunter, and Mordecai's like smirks and laughs at you, and he's like, okay, I guess we'll see. Um, and then you wind up fighting with them. Did you yeah, it, fight Mordecai? Uh, was a, like knock him from his sniper nest? Uh, I did knock him from his sniper nest, but uh, at the end of the sequence, uh, Athena is uh, using her shield. Uh, and Valerie uh, shoots uh, rockets at uh, uh, Fiona. Uh, Athena throws the shield to uh, Fiona. She uses the shield, and then uh, Athena g- gets shot at. F- uh, no, sorry, Athena gets shot at. Uh, Fiona goes to throw the shield, but it's just a second too late, and uh, Athena gets shot and captured. Uh, okay, th- there, so the sequence yeah, th- ends the same yeah, there way, is a sh- but there's an entire QTE fight with you and Athena where you fight Brick and Mordecai together, and you beat them. Like, the two of you beat the two of them, um, and just as you're about to, like, escape is when Valerie shows up. Yeah, it just cuts that sequence at you. out. Okay. Because I do knock Mordecai out of the sniper's nest, but there wasn't that much in between, if I recall correctly. Yeah, you fight you fight Brick and like you use your pistol and you shoot one of his toes off, um, and then you also use your pistol to shoot Mordecai and like you short out uh, something on his right. I do shoot Brick so in the foot to, uh, to get away from him, but it wasn't a uh, a big QTE event. Yeah, no, it's it's all part of the part of the QTE. Like he, um, I mean, like he winds up grabbing you at one point, and this might be like the fights converge back at yeah. this moment because it's like right after this that Valerie comes out with a rocket. Okay, launcher. so it uh, reconvenes right when uh, Brick uh, gets shot in the pinky toe. Yeah, yeah, and you shoot his toe off. But yeah, there's there's an entire like two or three minute fight scene that's all QTE between you and Mordecai uh, and Brick. Oh, uh, honestly, I mean, mostly Athena's fighting Brick and you're fighting Mordecai. Um. 
And then you get like a little a little view where you can see that Zero's watching you. Ah. Because um, when Zero shows up at the end, he's like, uh, you get the little thing where it's like, you, you declared yourself a vault hunter. I guess you didn't have Zero show up no, at the I end, didn't. though. If you didn't do that. Yeah, Zero shows up at the end battle. Um, and it's like, you declared yourself as a vault hunter, and he wants to see more of you up close to judge whether or not he wants to work with you in the oh, future. Oh, So, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, you know, a two or three minute fight scene QTE between the four of you. But it ends the same way. Valerie comes out and she shoots a rocket at you and Athena throws you her shield. Um, and then I also chose to throw it back to Athena, but I was too slow and she got hit by the rocket. Um, yeah, which makes me wonder if you could have kept the shield. I don't know. Maybe. It seems like you had the option to do that, but I was like, nah, I'm going to throw this back. Um, but then like you go to do like this epic attack at Valerie and like pull your gun out and you go to shoot her. And I did shoot, but I shot her rocket launcher because she throws her rocket launcher on you and it's so mm-hmm. heavy it pins you to the ground and you can't pick it up by yourself. I had a good chuckle at that. Um, yeah, that's, then the, things yeah happen. that's the end of uh, the episode there because it picks up with her trying to lift the gun again. Remember? Yeah. Right, right. That is the start of episode four. She's trying to lift the gun. Um, but everyone's lost. Everyone's captured. Um, Marcus is talking about the uh, the darkest point of any hero story is when things start uh, falling into place. A little shocked that yeah. you didn't actually see Marcus during this uh, little adventure. Yeah, I wasn't there like a drawing of him or something. I didn't see one. I know his I know his like gun kiosks or whatever they are like gun um, vending machines show up a couple in a couple of scenes, but I don't th- like you don't actually see him. Uh, but anyways, so yeah, chapter four picks up right at the end of chapter three, and you've been captured, and Valerie's uh, interrogating you. This is where Cassius shows up and drops off Vaughn um, for, for yeah, me. Yeah, I didn't get that. Um, and then uh, then Gordis points out that the last piece of her upgrade is on Helios. Um, Helios. Uh, and so then Valerie has to keep you alive because you're the only people that could get her up or get up there to get it. Yeah, and of course she's going to kill you afterwards. Um, and then you hatch this plan for what you're going to do, and the group splits up. And for me, like I said, Reese and Vaughn head off to Old Old Haven Point, Old Haven. Um, and then Vaughn makes his escape when you go to get the face from the skin pizza, Va- Vasquez. Yeah, the skin pizza. Um, so I had Dumpy, and Dumpy helped me out in this scene, because uh, he, like, I deployed him, and he had a flashlight, and I could see some skags, which I avoided. Um, yeah, I didn't avoid then... the skags, but they you just ran off. Okay, uh, and then whenever I kicked, like, walk, I assume that this has to happen because I was like staying away from him, but then I got like a camera shot where I nudged the foot of one of the psychos. Dumpy like shoots him with a trank dart and knocks him out. Uh, I punch him. Uh, this is the point okay. where. Uh, uh, Reese realizes, wow, I should be punching with the robot arm. Yeah, he didn't have that realization for me because Dumpy just shot the guy. Yep, yeah, uh, and Jack also uh, points out a tripwire. Yep, uh, but uh, but uh, Jack points that out yeah, to me but too. Vaughn wasn't there at all, and uh, pretty much it plays out uh, that way where you know uh, the skags just run off when I get close, uh, punch the guy that wakes up. And then uh, continues on, uh, gets past the tripwire uh, through a QTE. And, well, Vasquez has uh, seen better days. Uh, the psychos yeah. have uh, found his corpse, which kind of throws the whole plan into disarray because the idea was to use the new U station, which is the cosmetic thing from uh, Borderlands, uh, to make a uh, disguise for Vasquez uh, as Reese. Well, they need his face, and his face has been peeled off as a skin pizza. Yep. But you do go and you get the yeah, face. Yeah, and this is also a segment the... where uh, it kind of forces you to remember, oh, yeah, scanning's a thing. Because you have to figure out which psycho has the face, but not get too close yeah. to him. Uh, and, yeah, another rather gross QTE where you're peeling the face off of the psycho's mask. And yeah. it gets stuck. Um, 
<laughs> and you have to and you have to like yank it mm-hmm. off and then the psycho wakes up and starts chasing you and he's got like grenades strapped to his chest but when you get over to the caravan or the truck or whatever it is like finch and what's Kroger. his face like shoot yeah shoot the uh the psycho yeah. with the grenade strapped to yeah, his and chest this... and blow him up. And that blows up Vasquez's body. Yeah, and, uh, Reese is uh, yelling at him, saying that, hey, we have to we have to recover for that corpse to be able to make the skies. And uh, Finch says, well, I got some baggies in the truck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Reese had a bad day. He had to piece the corpse back together to be able to make <laughs> the disguise. Yeah. Um. But so you then it cuts to Fiona and Sasha and they go talk to uh, Scooter and what's her name? Jane. What's her name? Jane. Janie. Janie um... Let me. I'm see. I'm on the wiki trying to find her. It, yeah, Janie Springs. That's her name. Janie Springs. Um. So yeah, you talk to her. Yeah, he, uh, um, yeah. And she's the one who knows how to build a rocket yeah, and. Uh... You have an option here uh, to essentially lie to Janie and say that Athena said that she loved her uh, when she got captured. Or to say that there wasn't really enough time. I chose to lie. I I told her that she said she loved her, but that wasn't really a lie. Maybe it's just I had different but dialogue I, options with Athena, but she talks about how much she really cares for uh, Janie. Yeah, I she didn't, thinks she yeah, loves her. I didn't her. have that with uh, mine, so mine was an outright lie. Yeah, I mean, it was technically a lie, because when she got captured, she didn't say anything, but I'd, I'd had a conversation with her previously, where she talks about how much she likes her, and she's like, I think I love her, and but it's so hard to make the changes to, to be who she needs me to be, like, I, I had that, I had a conversation with her about yeah. that. So I was like, yeah, no, she totally loves you. Um, and she's like, great, I'm gonna build a ro- I'll build you a rocket then. Yeah. But I love that. She's like, I'm going to build you a rocket, then I'm going to go find every fucking gun on this planet, and I'm going to go get my girlfriend and back. And marry the piss out of her. And I was like, yeah. And marry the piss out of her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then um, you have the... Uh, uh, do you think it's uh, the right stuff? Do you think it's uh, Armageddon, that uh, sequence of them walking out? <laughs> um, uh, it's, it's pretty much generic yeah. uh, space movie. Yeah, it, it gave me like a more of an Armageddon vibe. Yeah, especially with how right uh, that rocket is built. Yeah, um, but you know that that's what the montage. Yeah, and it's is. made it's out like of the caravan. The rocket <laughs> and uh, going to fly off into space. At some point, right before that, um, like you get to set up the disguises. I think it's when you first show up before you talk to Janie, um, and you and you like can choose to buy like extra nice Hyperion outfits for Sasha. Yeah, I bought and- the rather nice dress for Sasha. Uh, and yeah, I, did uh, I didn't get uh, Fiona anything because she was fine. Uh, see, I bought Fiona like the standard Hyperion yeah. dress. Uh, well, uh, the standard Hyperion, but yeah, uh, Sasha got the nice thing. Yeah. Um, and then Reese shows up and like can flirt with. Oh, wait, there's one. There was a. Uh, did you reveal to to Sasha and Fiona uh, that Jack was? Yes, in your I head revealed to him. And boy, the were they pissed. Yeah, I did too, and yes, they were pissed. But I don't know if it was because I had been so nice before, or if I just picked the right dialogue options afterwards. That, but they pretty quickly forgave. Yeah, me. same here. They were like, "Well, at least you were honest," you know. Um. Yeah, and stuff uh, like that. Yeah, there so. wasn't really a chance to uh, tell you about that. <laughs> yeah, um, it says only twenty eight percent of players revealed handsome Jack. Yeah, which is honestly a little surprising. It's that low. Yeah, um, but so yeah, you build the. Build the rocket, have the montage, go to space. But of course, there's a problem. <laughs> yeah, remember that corpse um, from episode one? It, it's still yeah, hanging around. It, yep, it hits your your rocket, your your space caravan, um, causes some damage. You have to like, I don't know, turn the thrust up to eleven or whatever, and then the engines overheat. And so you and Scooter, uh, Fiona, well, yeah, Scooter well, Scooter Scooter's uh, flirting with you before that. Which yeah. is a little out of character for Scooter because you're not related to him. Yeah, Scooter. Well, no, Scooter like hits on all women. Yeah, but he really goes like, after his relations, you know. Yeah, he's really after Ellie. Which Ellie is one of my favorite Borderlands characters. But anyways, um, so you and Scooter go out into space to fix the rockets. 
And um, of course, it's uh, set up in a completely convoluted way where the button to re- uh, to turn off the rocket is behind this snapping uh, panel. Yep. Where it is constantly and s- opening and closing. Yep. And you successfully take care of yours, but you find out in a moment later that Scooter's arm has gotten trapped inside the panel uh, and you can't get it open and there's not enough time to like fix it because the engine's about to overheat and explode. So you have like this little conversation with Scooter um, and he gets all sentimental yeah. instead of being like all crazy and weird. Uh, I chose to hug Scooter. Yeah, I hugged him too. I figured uh, trying to uh, go to uh, Plan C, which uh, he referred to as making out, would kill both yeah. of you. <laughs> yeah, having to take off the uh, the helmets. But yeah, I gave him a hug um, and then released his engine. And then he rides it very much, you know, space cowboy well, style well, uh, before it blows up. Well, it's a uh, Doctor Strangelove uh, reference. Uh, riding the bomb. I have not seen. Oh, you're right. Riding the bomb down out of the airplane, yeah. right? That's from Doctor Strangelove. Yeah. I didn't make that connection. When I, I mean, I mean, he yeah, mounts I... it perfectly. Like, uh, uh, I think it's uh, the pilot's name is King Kong. Uh, or his uh, his last name is uh, 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 the pilot's last name is King, so everybody refers to him as King Kong. Yeah, I just didn't. I my brain didn't make that connection. I, I was playing this as soon last as night. soon as he uh, yo uh, flipped around uh, to uh, ride it like that. The other possible reference is uh, Space Cowboys. Yeah, well, no, I mean, Space Cowboys is the reference. Uh, that... uh, the uh, Tommy Lee Jones character. Yeah, that's where where yeah, my brain but, went. Yeah, uh, but different uh, positioning. Uh, the Space Cowboys, uh, he uh, is on the front of the rocket, not riding it. I got you. That's why I'm thinking more well, Doctor Strange Love, even though I did call him a Space re- Cowboy. Regardless, uh, Scooter flies off into the metaphorical sunset, and the rocket blows up, killing him. Yeah, which is honestly uh, a little shocking. Inside. Yeah, I didn't expect. I figured that there would be some death, but I didn't figure they'd kill Scooter. Yeah, I don't know. It, it makes me did. wonder how they're uh, if they're going to tie this into uh, the Borderlands Three, which is in development. Is this their way yeah. of getting rid of Scooter and doing a new character for it? Maybe or letting Ellie take over. Does that mean we could kill Claptrap? <laughs> I hope so. Let Gordas take over. But uh, anyway, so yeah, Scooter rides off into the sunset, blows up. You go back inside. Everyone's very yeah, sad. He- you can choose whether to honor him or not, because he brought a satellite to like deploy in space and advertise his new franchise. Yeah, which um, and we both chose to honor him, and we just picked different messages because yeah. you had four messages you could pick. Yeah, one of uh, which was this uh, trademark catch a ride. I chose a uh, you know uh, see a space cowboy, uh, which is a reference to Cowboy Bebop. So uh, yeah, I see uh, Cowboy Bebop. I choose Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, I chose to go with this catchphrase, catch a ride, because I was, I was in my head, like, thinking, but, like, Scooter would probably But like maybe that, that uh, you know, maybe that was the wrong choice for me, or it, it acted like I didn't deploy the satellite at all. That's what really threw me. It, it didn't say that, you know, I chose the wrong message. It said, literally, I chose uh, to not honor Scooter at all. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I don't know if that was a glitch or not. Um yeah, well, it's not like the Twitch version has had trouble and, anyways, anyway. On mine, it says you and 52.1% of players honored Scooter with his catchphrase. Yeah. Uh, let me see what the wiki says. Okay. Uh, so, okay, so it's for each one. Uh, honored Scooter with his catchphrase. Honored Scooter with Sea of Space Cowboy. Yeah, that's why I was confused Honored by Scooter it. by calling him the best mechanic ever. Honored Scooter by saying hero, friend, hero, or... Did not honor Scooter. How many didn't honor Scooter at all? Uh, it says 10%. Wow, 10% are very cold bastards. Yeah. Uh, okay, Scooter's annoying, but he's lovable. Yeah, he's a lovable idiot. Um, but anyways, so you after that, you land on the ship and put on your Vasquez disguise as Reese <laughs> and go out. Yeah, the, uh, um, uh, funny. And you've got the box of jibs. Yeah, with duct tape on it that says Reese. But funny thing is that the uh, game face that you have at the be- very beginning of the uh, game in episode one, uh, that's how you, uh, you know, uh, act as Vasquez. You know, that's the face you put uh, on. I didn't catch yeah. that, but that makes sense. <laughs> uh, that and, makes sense. and that's why <laughs> you look like a douchebag. 
because that's what I was called originally. But so, you know, you have a couple sequ- like you have a sequence where you have to get past the guards uh, and then Yvette shows up and she's like yelling at you, um, rebuking yeah. you. And at first it's like you're like, OK, she thinks I'm Vasquez. I should, you know, try and talk to her privately. But then like she says something is like we had a deal. And then, like, you see it in the face of Reese. It's like, oh, shit, she was going to betray me. Which, it's kind of obvious. I, so. know, both of us had kind of called that anyways. Like, it's pretty obvious that she'll do whatever Yeah, and I never takes. revealed to her I was uh, uh, Vasquez until, you know, the very end. Yeah, same. I didn't reveal to her that I was Vasquez. Or, or not Vasquez, but, you know, you I can say. Yeah. Yeah, we revealed to her that I was actually Reese. Um, but you go through a couple of... of few lines of dialogue with her and she threatens you and is like getting on to you because it's like oh you basically destroyed his body there's no way like we're screwed because we couldn't can't recover what's in his head yeah which i still don't get how um, they uh, figured out there was anything in his head let alone you know what to yeah it yeah it just doesn't make sense yeah i don't i don't get that either but uh you know you shoo her off and you make it down to your office um and at this point, does it swap to the others? No, you, yeah, you get to the office, you hack Vasquez's computer, mm-hmm. right, um, and, and then like you have yeah. to play like a little mini yeah, game. Yeah, Jack upgrades your hacking ability. Yep, um, and then you gain control of the security system, and then you come out of the hallways. Then Fiona and Sasha come out, uh, and they go to do their part of the plan to get up to Jack's office, uh, which they pose as like a tour guide, or they're trying to pose as tour guides. Mm-hmm. Um. You get a little scene where they're, uh, like, running a play. Like, this felt very, like, an Oceans movie yeah. to me. Like, the way that they, like, went over the plan initially at the beginning of the episode, and then the way that some of this stuff plays out is, like, it feels very much like an Oceans movie to me, which I liked. I really appreciated that. Episode four was my favorite of the entire set. Um, just because of that, it felt very much like an Oceans movie at the beginning, and then there's some fun stuff a little bit later on. Uh, it's the episode with the finger yeah. guns. Uh, but anyways, so they, you know, they run this play on this girl and they get her ID. Um, Fiona gets up to the tour guide's office um, and doesn't. Oh, there's yeah. a group. Yeah, up there's there. a tour like group. A group waiting for a tour. And so she has to like fake being a tour yeah, guide. Yeah, and I was able to you know, give the proper uh, explanation for most of it. Granted, the chair at the end was funny. Yeah. The- yeah, because it's, you know, if you've played the previous games, then you know what to say. And even though, like, she's kind of faking it, it's the right stuff. And or so, close like, they enough. they don't get suspicious of you. But, yeah, or close enough that they don't get yeah, suspicious. Yeah, but then at the But end, then there's the chair that's just like a guard's chair. Yeah, and she says, uh, this is to symbolize that Jack is no longer with us. And we should uh, have a moment of silence. And the guard comes back and uh, is talking about having to go to the toilet. Oh, I picked a different response to that, which is basically it has the same outcome, but it was something about how it was like his thinking chair or his decision making yeah, chair. T- it's like he always came down to this chair to make hard decisions so that he could be one with the people instead of being in his, you know, his office. And then yeah, the see, comes I, back. I went with, uh, you know, it's a memorial. Yeah. So then you go up to the office a tour and the security still, system still doesn't. Yep. Yeah. And the security system doesn't deactivate properly or all the way. And, like, one of the guys tries to rush in, and he gets vaporized by the security system. I tried to stop him. Um, I don't really know if it matters or not. That's one of the choices that it tracks. Uh, I, um, for me, uh, there was an option uh, to uh, – uh, at first, uh, you see this little fly, and it tries to fly into the office, and it gets vaporized. And uh, there's an option that you could send him to the office uh, – or, you know, try to stop them. I and mean, I just, you know, I figured, you know, they like Handsome Jack so much. Why don't they stay here permanently? Yeah, I act- I tried to stop them. And, like, one guy is like, no, screw you. I'm going in. And he gets vaporized by the security system. And it sets off the alarm. Yeah, see, all of them the office down for, for me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, all the rest of them were like, oh, fuck. And they ran away. And then the, the yeah, see, security that's, guard comes uh, up. That's the difference. Like, okay, so it's. The entire group versus one. Yeah. So for me, uh, Vaporized Tour Group, 38.3%. I'm a cold fucker, I guess. Nice. So the security guard comes up and he's like, you know, fuck this. I'm not cleaning it up again. It's your turn. <laughs> again. And you're like, okay. <laughs> the security guard leaves. 
And so then uh, it swaps back to Reese um, because she's like, I can't get in. Try and find me a way in. And Yvette comes into the office and is like having a chat with you. Yeah. And you also Um, find out at this point that the only way to get into the office is through the jack hole. Because, of course, a handsome jack has a trap door in his office. So how did you handle Yvette? Because she like basically is like, I'm fuck this. I'm going to turn you in. I'm turning Locked her you. out. I'm going to take my chances. Okay. I had, since I had Dumpy, I had Dumpy like shocker. And uh, her well, out. she met Mr. So. Stumbaton. Nice. So essentially the same yeah, thing. I mean, that was, yeah. I mean, that was one of my choices. I could have like, it was knock well, her out. Well, that's also Dumpy, how. Uh, or try and talk your way see, out. That's also it. how uh, she figured out it was me was that she saw the Stumbaton thought. Hey, wait, that's the same type I gave to Re. Oh. And then she went flying. Yeah, she she didn't she didn't figure it out for me. She just was like, what the fuck are you doing? And he, he was like, I'm making sure you don't turn me in. And so then Dumpy goes and he shoots her in the ass with a <laughs> like a, a shock dart and it knocks her out. Yeah, see, she, she, she had a little trip as well. Yeah. Um, and so then so you leave because you're headed towards the jack hole. And your disguise is starting to break down. Mm-hmm. Um, at least it was for yeah, me. Yeah, same here. Uh, the voice was going okay. first. Uh, and, and by yeah. the time you got to the... Uh, uh, well, essentially the prison level. I mean, let's be honest here. Yeah. Uh, You're talking to the guards like, what's wrong with your voice? So I had a burrito yeah. <laughs> for lunch and it's gone to my stomach. Yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah. And the jack hole terrible, was a, but... kind of a combination of escape slash uh, murder hole. Yeah. Um, but it, uh, when you're on your way down to the jack hole, like all of the accountants come yeah. up to you and you have like the finger gun fight, which feels very much like a play on like the matrix a play or, on the matrix. You know, plus like, I'm pretty sure a documentary of why gearbox, uh, kind of half ass, uh, some of their games. <laughs> yeah. Cause you gotta admit gearbox is, um, uh, a quality is not quite Bethesda levels, but close at times. Yeah. But it, it was pretty hilarious all the yeah, way through. Yeah, what's also Just interesting is, uh, do you know what happens when you fail? No. Uh, they pull out guns and try to shoot you. Oh, like yeah. real guns? Oh. Well, that did not happen to yeah, me. Yeah, same here. I, uh, I, I, I was succeeded. just wondering. Because I finished this game you know, uh, early or late Sunday, early Monday. So I had time to start researching some of the choices. Yeah, I mean, I, I succeeded and, you know beat all the guys with the, yeah and there yeah and there was guns. things like uh you know they were counting the bullets so they knew i was out and uh, grabbing a uh, chair leg and batting uh, grenades back you know just uh hugely over the top but completely pretend yeah it was and i was wondering if this was going to turn out to be an unreliable narrator scene yeah. but you know they played it straight through well considering so. you know they did the finger guns uh earlier yeah, I mean, the finger guns were something that, like, you see happening multiple times. But I just thought that it was just, like, a you know, a joke or whatever. But then they turned it into, like, a serious action scene that's still somehow, like, a joke. It was good. Yeah, I, I think it. that was probably the best uh, QTE sequence. Um, During all of this, you've told Fiona to meet you to the prison yeah. level. And she's like, how do get I do arrested. that? Like, you know, and he's like, just get arrested. We've been trying to um, avoid so- that. So you walk out and you uh, like have an option of a couple of things to do, and I chose to shoot the diamond yeah. pony, aka Butt yeah, Stallion. Yeah, Butt Stallion, which seems to be and Butt Stallion bleeds. Yeah, which uh, is that really Butt Stallion then? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that, but, yeah. I mean Butt Stallion was a real horse. So. Well, well, a horse made out of diamonds. Well, so uh, is it uh, air quotes real uh, horse? Do, so does that mean that they took a real horse and made it look like Butt Stallion and have it? Stuff to mounted in the exhibit. I I don't know, but they make a big joke about it. She's like, "What the fuck? It's bleeding!" And he's like, and "No, Gordis, uh, no, it's not. Uh, Gordis, maybe it's full of strawberry jam." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like they play that up for laughs. But then you know, Reese says Vasquez like makes it down to the prison level, and Fiona's there, and she gets the or Reese gets the guard to go away. Um, and then you go over and figure out how to work the murder hole and climb up. Or the jack hole. Climb up. <laughs> and then you're in, in Jack's office. Um, and because I had chosen to work with Jack, he was like super friendly, like giving me a tour. And he was like, I'm going to make you president. Yeah, see, he was talking uh, about making to... me president as well. Uh, but he was a little bit hostile. Yeah, but kind of uh, it, it was 
uh, passive aggressive almost to talking about you know uh, how great a uh, being leader of Hyperion would be. Yeah, no, he wasn't doing that with me. He was like talking about how we were friends and we had been on this journey together and that I was the only partner he'd ever had that was competent. And then he was like, actually, that really surprises me because you kind of (laughs) sucked at the beginning. So, you know, he's still kind of being a dick, but it was a lot more genuine. Like it felt really genuine. Like we were friends. Um, And he, you know, tells me about some of the stuff in his in his glass display case. Yeah. And- Unfortunately, like there was like a bra and some other stuff in there that you could not- I think the bra is supposed to be like Mad Moxie's bra. Oh, my. Um, I mean, that looks like her bra. Uh, but, like, you're you're implying in there, no Mad Moxie on. would wear underwear. That's true. That's true. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you search yeah, through all the pieces yeah, you and sur- you find the you one that's the beacon. You uh, I uh, scanned everything that I could uh, up until it got to the unknown stuff because I knew that was going to, one of them was going to be the thing. So Jack yeah, I, uh, I bought out uh, Atlas, and he's actually the owner of Atlas, which comes into play later. I wonder if uh, I yep. wonder if you didn't scan that, if the ending would be different. I don't know, because I mean, I, you know, I scanned it, so I got the part where it's like I took in, in chapter five. He takes the, like the deed to Atlas, and Reese does, so that now he owns mm-hmm. Atlas. But yeah, I wonder if you didn't scan it, if you'd know that's what it was. But uh, so, anyways, then you go back over. Uh, a- after you've got it, got the thing, you walk over to the desk, and Jack's like, "Yeah, you have to, you know, open the murder hole from or the jack hole from the desk." So you sit down, and he tells you how to activate it. And he's like, "So, do you want to be president of Hyperion?" Yeah, see, I, and he this is like, the choice that bugged out for me. Either that, or I misclicked because I said no, but it still acted like I said yes. Uh, but then, it, um, but then it gave me a choice to back out uh, from the executive uh, uh, jackport. Yeah, I mean, it gives me, it gave me the option to back out too, because I was like, I was totally like, yes, I want to be the president of Hyperion. Because in my head, I'm going, you know, it's, this is Borderlands. It's probably going to go horribly wrong, but maybe by taking the, making this choice, like there's some way that you can do something in the final chapter that makes this easier or whatever. Yeah, see, I, so I, I knew it was going to go wrong, and I figured if it was going to go wrong, it was going to happen anyway. So I may as well not be compromised. Yeah. No, I, I accepted. Um, and the so it, it ports into your head, and Jack goes into the to Helios, and you know his AI leaves your head, uh, and he goes to Helios and takes over the station. Um, and is that the end of the chapter? Uh, yeah. Or is the okay? I, I was thinking so. It's you know haven't played all this stuff in like you know yeah kind of all uh, uh, runs together, doesn't it? Yeah. But so then the chapter ends, and then when it it starts like right where the yeah, and people are uh, pissed at me uh, saying that I was uh, uh, Jack announced me president even though I didn't uh, take that choice. Yeah, see, I did take the choice, and he announces you president. Yeah, there was never the he, announcement for me. Then there's some like talking where that Jack talks to you in the office, and he was like really friendly, and like I mean, it does like pop up a thing, and like you see it on the screen, and Jack's like, "Hey, everybody, I'm back." Uh, and I'm announcing the successor to the throne as Reese. Uh, and he like makes a joke about how he was a janitor before, but now he's going to be cleaning up Pandora. Yeah, I never made that uh, and I, uh, joke. I think that was based on one of the things, because when you agree to an alliance with Jack, he asks you what you want to do. And I said, I want to fix Pandora. Yeah, there, You know, I want to make it a nice livable yeah, place. Yeah, see, for me, he was being passive aggressive, uh, but by uh, saying, if, if you could uh, run things... Uh, what would you do, and how would you do it? That sort of thing. What, so I get the same choices, but a different tone. Yeah. Um. So you know he makes that announcement. Um. And then, uh, he gives you the a choice of three things. Yeah, you I can got do that as well. Like your first executive decision, and I chose like you can have a pizza party, fire everyone in accounting, or blow up a bandit camp. And so I chose to blow up a bandit uh, same camp, here. and he blows up like a settlement. Yeah, he blows up prosperity. Instead of a bandit camp. Yeah. Uh, same here. I went after the bandit camp because, you know, fuck bandits, because I wanted to try to fix things. Yeah. I almost picked Pizza Party, but then I was like, no, I said I wanted to fix things. It, made, so maybe... it makes me wonder if you chose something else, he would still blow up the bandit camp. Or yeah. bandit. Bandit with air yeah. quotes. Um. But so, yeah, then you do that and he talks to you some more. And then he was like, so uh, he he reveals like the, the suit 
the robot suit. Yeah, the endoskeleton. You can like stuff in. Yeah, the endoskeleton. So you stuff it inside corpses and. Well, then- no, 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 no. The original uh, uh, plot of it, uh, the arm was uh, sticking out through the desk, and he was talking about how it was an immortality suit. Uh, but yeah. the. Uh, but the flaw of it was that it kind of killed the person that they was being used on because uh, uh what was the scientist's name the same one that uh, you got uh, Nakayama uh, Yaka- Nakayama uh, yeah sure uh, the idea of the suit was that it goes inside the body you know as an endo suit you know think Terminator only they don't grow flesh over it so they just kind of shove it into a person and it kind of kills them which completely uh, negates the idea of immortality but then jack comes up with the idea of using it on corpses and uploading a copy of his ai uh to that so he has a jack army yep and then you're like oh that's maybe like my response was like that's kind of a little weird but sure i guess it works Uh, see i was was like yeah i was saying you're completely insane (laughs) yeah i i was just like i mean that's weird but it works i mean they're already because jack was like yeah we'll just use it on dead people we won't kill anybody we'll just use the people that are already dead and there's lots of people that die on pandora right and i was like yeah that's a little weird but i guess it works and then he's like and you will be the first one and i'm like what and he's like yeah i'll kill you and then i'll put the the endoskeleton in you and upload my ai and you'll be my like my real physical number one body you and me reese we're gonna be a team forever and he's like, uh, that'll kill me. I won't be much of a team if if you kill me. And he's like, ah, oh, we'll work out the details later. <laughs> and then Reese is like, no, that's I'm not going to let you do that, Jack. And then Jack like gets mad. And he's like, you know, that's kind of a dick move. I made you president of the company and all. And now you're just going to say, no, I can't kill you and put a skeleton in you and then upload my AI into your body. Not cool, Reese. Not cool. And then he like gives me another choice to to change my mind. I wonder but, if you could I mean, do a game over. the answers were. No, all of the answers were just various versions of no. And then he gets mad and he starts trying to kill you and sends everybody after you and you go to escape. Uh, but you get trapped in the door for the the jackhole. Yeah. Um, and then the last piece of Gordis falls down the, the shaft um, to to Fiona. And then it cuts over to yeah, her. Yeah, and Gordis in the, and, enti- uh, the entire time. Uh, was she back on Pandora or was she staying in the uh, caravan? I think she stayed back, uh, stayed behind. Yeah, Gordis originally was going to stay behind, but then like she shows up at the yeah. present level for some reason. They're like, "Why are you here?" And she was like, "Well, I just came to get the upgrade." <laughs> She's like, "I'm just trying to help." I'm um, helping. And then, like, some people show up, and they're talking to Gordas, and you can, like, hear her down the hallway, like, um, I'm not supposed to tell you that. Um, I'm not supposed to reveal their location, or whoever. And then she's, like, you know, just being, like, sweet. Yeah. And it's like, well, maybe if they came over here and talked to you, then I could tell you about it. <laughs> um, and then, like, Fiona sneaks up, like, to listen, and Gordas is like, oh, wait, never mind, there she is. And Fiona's like, ugh. Gordas, if you weren't so cute... Um, and it's, uh, Yvette and some security guards, um, and they go to arrest you and lock you up, but I don't, I don't remember exactly what happens, uh, well, uh, uh, but you get, you get the opportunity to punch Yvette uh, in the face. The thing was, uh, at least for me, was that there was a, uh, she was, uh, looking for Reese because I revealed myself by, you know, the stun baton, and she yeah. could hear, uh, over the disco party. <laughs> from the jackhole uh my voice or reese's voice i should say so uh, she's uh yeah looking around and there's an opportunity to punch her so i did and a vet's face would remember that yeah okay it's the same sort of thing but instead of like me being revealed to her she was like oh after there was the announcement about reese i had to come find where he was and look who i found it's you guys here um, but yeah, and then Jack at that point is like, I need Reese immediately. I know I just made him president and he's a cool guy and all, so I need to give him a party. Yeah. yeah and then shenanigans. He must've went to the bathroom or something and got lost. <laughs> the executive back bathroom is really big up here. You know, there's like some jokes like that during this. The yeah. And pretty much Jack so, yeah, is uh, uh, going absolutely nuts at this point because for me, I refused him and was able to, I'm trying to remember how I escaped on this. 
But I don't recall. I think I got down to that jack hole eventually, but everybody was already gone. Yeah, yeah. Because um, she uh, she popped open like the, you get the pri- uh, there was a switch that you had to hold. That's why the group split up. But she jammed a brim under it. Yeah, but uh, eventually you like you pry the door back open or something, and you fall down, and it's after everybody's already left. And uh, as you're walking out, Yvette like tries to convince you to let her out to let her help nope. you. And I left her in her cell to cell to uh, rot. Well, not too much rod as I uh, have. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I left yeah. her in her cell. So as then well. you leave. Uh, Reese leaves, and he heads to the power core to shut down. Yeah, Helios. because she uh, because he wants to take out Jack. At least for me, you know. Uh, you know, Jack is obviously a threat. Uh, take out the power core. See how long he can survive without power. Yep. Um, and then the rest of the group. Um, well, yeah. yeah, that's what I was doing. I was headed to the core to open the bay doors and then try and shut down Jack. The rest of the group is headed to the ship. Um, and Jack is like tracking them and like trying to, you know, talk to them and find out where Reese is. Uh, August shows up, um, shoots all of the Jack screens and then is like, all right, yeah, let's there's go. There's a lot of monitors in this place. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you guys head to the, the hangar bay with, uh, what's his face? I keep Finch. forgetting their names. Finch and Kroger. Yeah. Yeah. Kroger has there. the little mustache. Yeah. Um, and, and Finch gets Gordas into the caravan and Kroger pulls a gun on everybody. Um, and there's a shootout. Um, you try and convince August to help you, or at least I tried to convince August to help me, but he was like, you know, he's like, no, let's, at first he was like, no, let's not do this. But then he wound up attacking me, uh, during the yeah. shootout. So I don't know if I convinced him or not or, or what, but. There was a shootout. I uh, shot um, uh, the like an oxygen tank or something. Yeah, uh, uh, very just cause. <laughs> yeah, it knocks him down, but Finch escapes the planet with Gordas. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so everybody's uh, trapped uh, uh, on well the soon to be falling space station because yeah. Meanwhile, Reese gets the power core. Uh, and just destroys yeah, it. Uh, he starts uh, punching out the uh, uh, conduits with the stun baton, and then Jack, uh, you know, closes the door and says, Haha, you'd think it would be so funny. He just pushes the <laughs> stun baton through the slots in the door. Through the, the slats, yeah. Um, winds up destroying the power core, which causes the Helios to lose its stable orbit. Start plummeting towards the planet. Jack's yelling at you a lot. <laughs> Chaos ensues. Everyone heads for the escape pods. Uh, Jack's taunting um, you the entire time. You think uh, there's an escape pod for everybody on the station? Do you realize how expensive that would be? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Loaderbot puts Fiona in an escape pod and, um, and sends and her says, on her I way. must uh, go, find my hum- uh, go, uh, go save my human because uh, whenever uh, Jack was originally going to vent the power cord to just blow Reese out. Uh, but uh, Reese was able to restore the power core, which caused the uh, doors to basically slam shut. But he's trapped in there, and he's calling to the loader bot yeah. to help him. Yep, I can't imagine how different that relationship might have played out if you go to trigger loader bot self destruct function in the first. Uh, maybe a loader bot eventually warms up to you, but yeah, as a bit more of a dick earlier. But yeah. loader bot absolutely loves me. <laughs> but then again, I also yeah, made so- him very snazzy. Yeah, but Loaderbot saves Reese, puts him in a, eventually puts him in a, like, a damaged escape pod, but Loaderbot's able yeah, to, like, yeah. well, seal well, the door. Well, there's and- a sequence where uh, you're going through trying to find a, a an escape pod, and there's one that's looked like it took a shot or something, and it uh, and he calls it a death trap and runs past it. And he uh, sees one off in the distance, and by this time, Jack has figured out where he is, and a turret drops down right in front of him, uh, in front of the escape pod and he's trying to figure out how to stop it and somebody else comes up and (laughs) takes the escape pod yeah he's like we can share it together and the other guy's like fuck you buddy (laughs) he gets in the escape pod and leaves but yeah Loderbot also puts Reese in the escape pod yeah and Reese is uh, saying wait Um, what about you you can't fit in this go (laughs) and shoves uh, shoves you in uh, sends you off and Reese is banging on the door trying to get out yeah and Kroger comes up and shoots Loderbot and you think kills him 
Yeah, you, you you think Loderbot's dead. You find out later that Loderbot survived somehow, but at that point, you think he's mm-hmm. dead. Um, yeah, and, so your escape yeah, and this pods. This is the uh, credit se- or the well, the opening sequence is uh, everybody's uh, going out, uh, ships exploding, uh, uh, escape pods uh, turning out being death pods. Yeah, yeah, lots of people wind up getting uh, killed as uh, you know, just everybody's exploding and Helos is crashing uh, during this uh, epic uh, intro sequence. Uh, I do like that they have the uh, yep. the music sequences not immediately at the beginning. I think episode four is a uh, a good chunk in, but this one's also fairly uh, well into this into the episode. Yeah, I mean it's a good fifteen or twenty minutes into the episode when the uh, but the but it really sets it up roll. a lot better, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Um, but so yeah, you follow you know both of like it cuts back and forth between Reese and Fiona as their pods head to the planet and crash. And each of them wind up in different places. Reese crashes uh, pretty close to the part of Helios where Jack's office was. Um, and he wanders into the office. Um, yeah, was there really a reason outside of nowhere else to go? I don't, yeah, I don't think so. I think he was just like walking where he could, looking for anything that could help him out. And it turned out that that was where Jack's office was. Um, and Jack. Um, still like having some power left is like talking yeah. to you. Uh, yeah, um, he uh, was getting very sentimental. He was talking about how everybody's uh, yeah d- betrayed him. Uh, uh, talked about Angel because uh, at this point, uh, he was able to access Helios's database and yeah, you know, basically get up to speed on what happened. Uh, yeah. and found out yeah, you know, Angel's dead, which was his daughter. Uh, actually committed suicide. He was being very remorseful, and it was sucking you in to try to upload himself back up into your brain. Which he yeah, does do. he does. Um, and then he takes over your cybernetics and tries to kill you with your yeah, own cybernetics. Yeah, because he's at the point where he wa- I almost wants to die, really. So he figures, may as well take someone out with me. Hey, you're a good candidate for that. Yep. But then uh, you... Uh, rip your cyber. Yeah, you're arm able to off. essentially um, fall on a spike and damage the arm enough where it lets go, and uh, then yeah. uh, you have this uh, uh, once again a rather gross QTE where you're ripping your own uh, cybernetic arm off. Yep, and then you rip your own cybernetic implant yeah, and, out, and then your cybernetic eye is the last yeah. thing. And Jack winds up begging yeah, you uh, well, to not do well, it. It's a very uh, uh, that that moment where he realizes just uh, what. Well, Jack realizes just how far he's pushed you. You know, he's gloating, saying, oh, I'll, uh, maybe I'll just wait until you get old and gray and forget all about me. I'll be re- waiting there in the back of your mind, and I'll take over then. And th- that's when he, his uh, hologram kind of flickers uh, as you're taking this razor blade or something uh, around the implant to pull it out. And he turns around yeah. and sees that... Uh, uh, you pulled out the implant and you're starting to go for your eye, whereas the, you know, uh, which is connected to, I don't know, the processor or something, uh, to uh, be able to get him out of his head completely. And he's begging at this point. And I think this was the one moment where Jack is actually genuine because he's talking about yeah. how he's seen the afterlife uh, and that nothing and there. Yeah. Uh, it's not like they say. But then yeah. again, he's also. Uh, uh, not really alive. It's kind of tough to say uh, for an AI. Yeah. Did you did you choose to keep the eye or smash it. it? Okay, I kept it. it. It seemed like a bad idea to keep a version of Jack around. Probably, but I chose to. Like in my mind, I'm thinking, okay. I mean, he's still like this isn't made clear, but it seems like he's actually uploaded to your brain. Um, not into the implants he could just take control of them because they were connected to you through your nervous system so i thought that by pulling that stuff out he would still be there you just couldn't see him or hear him anymore because you no longer had the cybernetics so i in my mind like i kept those like just in case i ever needed to would need to access yeah to me it seemed like he was pretty much purely in the cybernetics and every time uh, he took over it was always talking about taking over his systems as in the cybernetic systems so it seemed that he would be uh, in the implants. So getting rid of that, especially, you know, that last chip was killing uh, Handsome yeah. Jack for good. So uh, it looks like, yeah, you know, barely the majority uh, 
yeah, agreed with me. 53.5%. Yeah. Or just wanted to kill Chad, um, which is always possible. Yeah. Um, uh, but then, then Reese collapses. Yeah. Like, he, after that, he yeah, passes out from... Yeah, and we have the time skip. Yeah. And we catch back up uh, uh, to the future. Or to the present, I should say. Future to uh, Reese. Well, no, you still have Fiona. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry. Uh, uh, so Fiona lands near this gigantic battle going on between um, Gordis, because she's got the last upgrade, and she turns into a giant robot. A giant cute robot. Uh, you and have the to, Traveler. Uh, say, cute robot. A giant cute. She is pretty cute once you actually get the reveal of what she looks like. You don't get that in this scene, though, because it's all smoky mm-hmm. and foggy and stuff. You get that later. But uh, she's a, di- a giant robot uh, fighting the Traveler, and you show up, and um, Valerie is trying to kill Gordis because they, they're like, we can't kill this monster and in order to lock the monster back in the vault, we have to kill Gordas, uh, because she's holding the vault open. Like, yeah, you know, that, that's what she's designed to do. Um, yeah, it seemed like a, a kind of a dumb idea for him to summon the vault without being prepared. Yeah, and I didn't want to, like, I didn't want to yeah, do same it. Here. I didn't want to kill her, but it it does force you to do it. Like, Gordas wants you to do it. Um, but like leading up to that, there's a couple of like dodge the car, like see all of the people running away scared mm-hmm. of the traveler uh, go um, and then, uh, see all the bodies yeah which uh one of them um, is finch oh finch was dead for uh, you no 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 finch was still alive oh okay uh, okay i was gonna say like i got the option to shoot finch and kill him which i did see, i let him bleed out yeah i shot him in the face and killed him uh, well i figured um, yo, i'm not gonna get a choice of what element i shoot him with may as well save the bullet at this point <laughs> yeah no i i just was like screw you finch and i shot him and killed him um oh well but uh 63 uh, percent uh, agreed with me though yeah i i like getting being one of the low lower percentage of people but anyways well, my um, lowest percentage i think is still upcoming not counting the uh random you know random weapons that sort of thing yeah so then you uh you and Sasha together like grab well Valerie gets killed by the traveler. Um it just like smashes the cliffside where she's standing. Yeah, on. luckily she throws her gun um, away. Yeah, luckily she throws her rocket launcher in a convenient place where you can easily get to. <laughs> Video game launcher. Uh, and then you use <laughs> Yeah, then you use that to shoot off the like the beacon uh off yeah, of because Gordis, Gordis, which is... uh, uh, well first uh, you, you try to shoot Gordis. But the rocket launcher is just too heavy. You can't, uh, you know, uh, get an aim on it. So you shoot and you hit Gordas. And Gordas says, no, shoot the beacon. And Sasha shows up and helps you prop up the gun and uh, shoot the beacon on top of Gordas' head. Uh, the giant yep. antenna. And then, yep, and then that shuts down and Gordas dies and the Traveler gets sealed away. And then you catch up to the yeah, present which, time. Let's uh, finish telling take your story. a quick break during all this, during our time skip. Montage. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, catching up to the time skip. Yeah, it seemed like a good spot. Um. So yeah, you uh, are uh, during the previous four episodes uh, uh, at the beginning and some points during the episode itself, you. Oh, oh, sorry. Well, you're, you as in the royal you, both Fiona and Reese, along with this masked stranger, have been traveling for some unknown reason. And uh, Fiona's been trying to figure out who this person is. And it turns out uh, you get to the place and there's going to be a swap. Kroger shows up with the uh, the leader of this bandit group. And I immediately knew this was Vaughn. <laughs> uh, and at this point, Vaughn's been gone for, I would say, what, three episodes now? <laughs> but. Um, for you, yeah, he, I mean, for you, he would have disappeared. Uh, about. Uh, at the end of episode yeah. three. Uh, so about two episodes. Uh, yeah, you got a little bit more time with him, but. Uh, the hint for Vaughn was really the mask. Uh, but, yo. Know, he was jacked. Obviously, it was Vaughn. <laughs> and yeah, I was like, I'm pretty sure that's yeah, Vaughn. And Kroger wanted to kill Fiona, 
and the Masked Ranger grabs Kroger and snaps his neck. Yep. And turn the tides on uh, the Masked Ranger because, uh, well, at the time, uh, the leader of this bandit group that you still don't know is Vaughn uh, until, yeah, after the fact, pulls a knife and cuts away the duct tape. Which, man, this guy had a lot of duct tape. <laughs> yeah, he did. I mean, he had the, just this little tiny roll, but was able to wrap up both uh, Reese and uh, Fiona at least twice. Uh, with copious yeah. amounts, I might add. Uh, so, they, uh, you know, it, they get cut up, uh, you know, uh, well, cut uh, free. And uh, Vaughn reveals himself. But, you know, we knew it was Vaughn instantly. <laughs> yeah, he and his, uh, what are they called? The children of Yeah, Helios? the children of Helios. Because... Uh, he stumbled upon uh, the wreckage, the main wreckage of Helios, and all the accountants and every uh, all the executives uh, kind of congregated back to the wreckage, trying to figure out what to do because they were completely lost. And they elected Von Leader. And my question was, "You really?" <laughs> uh, which uh, I mean, he was weirdly Jack. Well, well no, uh, his ex- explanation was he was the only one that even vaguely do what was to, what to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, they saw him as the uh, obvious choice for the job. And they're coming to town and everybody was bowing to him. And Reese was uh, mentioned, wow, they really revere you. And turns out, no, it was Reese they were bowing to because they see Reese yep. as this messiah that uh, threw them away from the corporate machine, essentially. And they even have one of the statues of Handsome Jack and knocked the head off and painted Reese rather crudely across the chest. <laughs> oh. Yep. So you get back inside Helios, which is their, you know, their yeah, base. And, their, uh, this entire their t- bandit pirate base. Yeah, and they're, yeah, it's like this shanty town, and they're leading the masked stranger uh, to uh, uh, go interrogate him. To find out what the hell. Because at this point, you still don't know why you've been captured. Uh, the stranger's been demanding information from you, but uh, you're suspicious of him, but uh, you figure that he's uh, yeah, someone that wants payback. And that's about it. Yep. You get to choose as Fiona to be good cop or bad cop. Well, actually, well, Did you well, you're, good cop well, you're, uh, well, uh, Reese says, uh, you be bad cop, I'll be good cop. You get a choice to reverse right. that, but I chose not to. I figured, you know, Fiona's a pretty yeah. good bad cop. And Reese gets confused and also plays bad cop. <laughs> and also plays so it's bad, bad cop. cop and worse cop. <laughs> yeah. Although he's a pretty bad, bad <laughs> cop. He's not very good at his job. Of well, bad I didn't cop. say uh, worse as in, you know, being a bad cop. I'm saying he's a worse cop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then the big reveal of uh, the Masked Stranger it was Loaderbot. I did yep. not see Loaderbot um, he, coming. I, yeah, I didn't see that coming either. I thought Loaderbot okay, was Okay, I'm dead. glad I'm not the only idiot, because uh, the main reason why I kind of wrote off Loaderbot was the body, you know, because the Loaderbot had taken some severe combat damage, but somehow he swapped his head onto the headless uh, endoskeleton, and it yeah. worked. I did think it was weird that the endoskeleton didn't have a yeah. head. But not once did I think that, like, Loaderbot would put his eyeball on there. And I suppose, like, I don't know, if you're paying really good attention or if you just get a lucky guess or whatever, you might can figure it out. But, yeah, I didn't. I mean, I, I figured... I did I did agree with the character's assumption that the Masked Stranger had to be somebody that they knew. Some, but they're like, we've ran into yeah, so many someone, people. We've pissed yeah, off someone so they many knew people. and someone that they uh, pissed off. Uh, so I wrote off, uh, you know, the, the main four and all the bots. Because Gordis was dead, I didn't have Dumpy. I figured Loaderbot was dead. That's why I wrote him off. Because Loaderbot had uh, yeah, yeah this gruesome death scene, or death yeah you know, scene. So you know I wrote him off. Yeah, where? Yeah. So, but it turns out that Loaderbot survived. Not only did he survive being shot up by Kroger, but he survived the ship crash landing. Well, uh, Loaderbot is badass. He, uh, he, he witnessed Fiona and and Sasha kill Gordis. And then he went to where um, Reese was, and recovered the endoskeleton and attached himself to it. Yeah, all, all this, this all this with one arm has been him. Yeah, this whole journey has been him testing you to like see 
what story you tell and yeah. what your intentions were, or and did you betray them at the end? Yeah, he what? was uh, rather upset that his girlfriend got shot. Yeah, because there there was a definite you know, there, there's a definite uh, relationship between uh, him and Gordas. Gordas doesn't uh, seem to really be getting it yet, but. I actually I think I, I'm, view it more as like a father daughter well, relationship. Not, well, I wasn't like, sure, you know. There there, there was some I sort mean, of you, relationship. I think you could see it either way. There's some sort of relationship there, and it could definitely go either way. But I got. I think more it really depends on how Gordas uh, matures, because Gordas yeah. hadn't been activated for that long. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, um, Loderbot reveals to you all of these things, and that he believes that you didn't actually betray Gordas. You did what you had to to stop the Traveler. Um, and he reveals to you that he's been putting together this plan all along, or, you know, this whole time to be able defeat to... Defeat the Traveler. Uh, bring Gordas back and defeat the Traveler so that she could live a happy life. Um, so he uh, has, like, put together this... Or he's putting together this team. And the team is based on all of your choices that you've made throughout the game. Yeah, you get to choose three people that yeah, have we have team. some very different um, teams, obviously. Apparently, uh, because, yeah. Okay, so, my team, I got August because I didn't uh, show that he was, uh, uh, I didn't blame him initially for the initial deal fucking up, and I also supported him when I could. Yeah, I could have chosen August, but I did not go with August. I got uh, Cassius. Yep, I couldn't. I couldn't even choose yep. Cassius because I had uh, agreed with Athena that she should. Yeah, kill so him. Uh, that was the one choice for Cassius, but that also takes Vaughn out for quite a while. So yeah, maybe, maybe double edged sword there. And also had Athena. Yep, I took Athena. Ninety six point seven percent of people. Yeah, took see, Athena. I didn't have stats for that. Uh, so yeah, because your game bugged out and you couldn't see the ending. Uh, it, I couldn't see um, the ending, and the stat screen was all jumbled. So, so okay, so your team, August, you had 66.4% of people chose August, 21.9% chose Cassius, 96.7% chose Athena. Yeah, I wanted Janie uh, instead of August, but because it bugged out on the satellite, it wouldn't allow me to take uh, Janie, which uh, confused me, because I was looking at the, uh, the requirements, and I had it. Yeah, I honored Scooter. I yeah. uh, uh, told her, uh, you know, that uh, Athena loved her. I mean, I had everything, and uh, no. Yeah. So I chose Athena. Uh, like I said, ninety six point seven percent of people I can't blame them. Obvious choice, obvious badass right there. Um, then I picked Janie. Sixty four point two percent of people. See, chose I would have been uh, in and- that one as well if you know I had the option. And then I picked zero. Um, forty-four point two percent of people chose zero, and the the choices for getting zero it was down um, to the vault hunter choice. It was down to the vault hunter choice. Uh, identifying yourself as a vault hunter. Um, and then Felix, twenty-one point three percent of people. I chose imagine Felix. Uh, Felix is dead in a lot of people's games. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, it, it seems like the only thing you had to do for Felix to be available is just make sure he yeah, didn't uh, die. Yeah, say that he didn't, uh, yeah, warn him of the bomb, essentially. Because even shooting him, he would have wandered off. Yeah. Um, and then there's one more. Uh, it's marked as unknown because I didn't have enough money, but I looked it up, and it's clapped. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't have enough basically, money. If you, basically, if you collect all of the money for the entire game and spend the bare or, minimum, you can afford clapped. Or there's a second way. The second okay. way is if you don't kill uh, Felix, he feels that he wasn't betraying you. Well, uh, not completely. What happens with Felix is actually really interesting. Uh, what happened is that once he has the money and he knows that there's a bomb in it, he eventually defuses the bomb and somehow hides uh, 9 million of the 10 million uh, remember the dresser that falls out in uh, episode two uh, that uh, is made a big deal of in the beginning of episode three with the picture? Yeah. The money's yeah. in that. You you go back and oh. get nine million and you're able to float forward cap- lap trap no matter what. Okay. So technically he did get betrayed out of one million, but his entire thing was uh, screwing over Valerie. 
So you would have gotten a lot. Right. Uh, you would have gotten nine million instead of you know like a billion or something. Right. So yeah. Uh, uh, so technically, we made the wrong choice on Felix. Yeah. Fuck him. <laughs> well, if you want um, so to, yeah, but you're, you're, I think you're going to need a squeegee for that. <laughs> so that's uh, yeah. Those so those are the two Vault Hunter teams that we chose. And what this has is it's you get some you know dialogue variations based on who you've chosen uh, in the final fight scene, and then also all of Gordas's combat powers are based on the people that you took. Yeah, uh, during the fight, um, you, uh, Gordas initially starts off uh, very, very afraid because she lost badly. So, uh, your uh, uh, Reese's uh, job uh, in the entire thing but his motivational speaker. He's trying to get Gordas to fight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and eventually, uh, Reese says, hey, if I could do it, I would. And Gordas says, okay. And picks him up and puts him in her cockpit because, of course, she has a cockpit. She's a Zord or, you know, or a Voltron or whatever you want to call it. And they have this... Yeah. I- I'm still trying to decide if it's Voltron or Power Rangers that they're making fun of with the uh, uh, version of the cockpit because it could be either, really. Yeah, uh, but uh, um, uh, Reese uh, starts controlling her and uh, uses his finger gun abilities, uh, but actual finger guns. Uh, but eventually, she gets hit and uh, it takes out the finger guns. And he says, uh, "Well, that's the only move you know. Well, why don't you try Athena? She does all sorts of combat moves. Great idea!" And she grabs the entire team. <laughs> yeah, and and mine zero's like, okay, we need to do this and this and this to buy, buy time for. Uh, Fiona and Sasha, because they, like, they're part of the plan. It, so, the uh, Traveler, like, his thing is that he can teleport. So, they can't actually hit him with any powerful enough weapons to take him down, because he can teleport or, away from them. So, Fiona and Sasha are trying to get inside the monster to blow up a bomb on its teleportation yeah. gland, which, for some reason, they, everyone feels weird saying <laughs> Yeah, that. well, also, uh, the, once the gland, which is kind of weird when you, when they keep saying it, gland, uh, gets destroyed, they're going to shoot it with uh, essentially the death ray from Helios. But Vine gets a little trigger happy because it's lined up perfectly whenever foot are opens. So he shoots him or tries to, and it just teleports. Yeah. And he's like, they're like, you fucked up. He's like, I'm so sorry. I'll recharge it. Please tell me we have another shot. So, but anyways, like, so in mind, Zero's like, we'll do this and this and this in order to keep it busy. Like, we can do this if we work together. And then Gordas picks them all up and puts him inside, and he's like, "Okay, we're doing this now instead." <laughs> well, uh, uh, and that was a, a, essentially Athena's thing uh, for for mine was that she was trying to coordinate the second team. Yeah, uh, but the different uh, QTE segments are based on the various team members. For uh, for example, Cassius actually tries to launch this giant Hayuken. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, it was um, a very so- convoluted QTE. I actually failed that one, and he just, uh, says. Well, it was just a theoretical move anyway. And then starts launching fireballs and stuff. Um, Athena, like, basically, you know, Gordas gets the this, this yeah. shield to use in combat. Um, with uh, with Janie, um, like, her thing was she built the rocket. So Athena, like, sprouts rocket boots and boosters on her back and is, like, flying around and doing, like, all these crazy, like, flying rocket kicks and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, August, uh, he basically uh, uh, starts punching a, a lot, uh, uh, boxer style. Sort of like yeah. a brawler. Yeah. Uh, Zero um, does, like, <laughs> whenever Zero takes control, he just, like, Gordas just sits down cross-legged. And they're like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then he's like, that teleport thing where he, like... Uh, teleports or phantoms mm-hmm. away and um reese has like a i don't know like a main crush on zero and he's like oh my god he did the <laughs> thing he did the, the te- invisible teleport thing did you all see that and like everyone else looks at him like you're an idiot um and zero does like ninja fighting um and it it, it feels honestly like you're playing uh, a fighter a rhythm yeah. game a, no a rhythm game with zero well almost like you know ddr or something except with a control pad um, does, does Gordas pull out a sword? Yeah, at the very end. At yeah. the end? Yeah. It, okay, I didn't know if that was specific no, to Zero no, that's or always if it's just thing. like... Uh, she pulls out the Buster Sword, essentially, which makes me wonder, why the fuck did she do that eventually, uh, at the very first? Yeah, why didn't she start yeah. with that? 
I wonder if that's a play on Pacific Rim. I don't know when this came out versus when Pacific Rim came out. But, like, that's a thing in Pacific Rim. Like, they get three quarters of the way through the movie, and it's like all of a sudden you have this giant fucking sword now that can eviscerate these kaiju. Why didn't you do that from the beginning? Well, it wasn't just cool. But, uh, but yeah. Okay. Uh, but- I, I didn't know if the sword was tied directly to Zero, like my team composition, or no. if that was an always no, that's thing. An always thing. I didn't have time to check it. Okay. Um, um, uh, but eventually, during the, this entire QTE sequence, which goes on, actually, I feel like uh, far too long, uh, they uh, are able to wrestle the Traveler into the position to be able to use the caravan to jump into this <coughs> energy vortex where the Traveler is uh, going to show up to teleport inside. And, of course, inside the alien is more aliens. So... <laughs> Uh, they have to fight their way to the uh, teleportation gland. Uh, and every time the traveler jumps, uh, the gravity kind of switches off for a moment. And they come up to the bottom of this giant open shaft where the gland is at the very top. Uh, and there's this sequence where they wait for the teleport to go off again and essentially just kind of jump zero G up uh going through uh, the different uh, places of cover and uh, with uh, Sasha uh, basically hiding behind this giant rock <laughs> uh, as she rockets up uh, towards the gland to uh, strap the explosives on. Yep. Uh, there is an option here for different routes, but it didn't seem like there was any major difference outside of just visuals. Yeah, it's like a sequence of three different actions as you and Sasha get up to the top to place the explosives yeah. um and then you go to escape but as you escape you realize your plan's not going to work because there's too much interference somebody has to go back and manually detonate yeah, and the sasha nominates herself and jumps out of the uh, caravan as it rockets away because they've already hit the boosters and the boosters are solid rocket boosters once they're on you can't turn them off until they uh, exhaust yep uh and uh as uh, fiona escapes out the mouth thankfully it's the mouth uh, granted, yeah. with Borderlands, that could have been a coin flip. It, yeah. Uh, uh, Sasha detonates the explosive, w- destroying the gland. Uh, and then uh, they shoot yeah. the... Uh, and the Traveler at this point is banging on Helios, trying to uh, destroy the laser, because it realized that uh, Gordas is what's keeping the Traveler out of the vault. Uh, so uh, the Traveler's been trying to ignore uh, uh, Gordas as much as possible. Even though I'm not sure how long that could have worked in the long run, honestly. Uh, but yeah. they invent- But they shoot it with Helios, which like cuts a ju- a giant hole in its chest, and and then Gordas pulls out the sword and goes slicey dicey and eviscerates it. Uh, the giant monster explodes. It's a shower of loot. It's a loot pinata. Um, everyone's looking for Sasha, and they find her. Uh, they yeah, find uh, essentially her. at the She's- gland. Yep. And she's dying. Um, they can't move her. She's got some like massive, in- some sort of internal organ damage or something. They try yeah, to move, her move her quick, move her spine around. <laughs> and they can't. So she's like all sentimental with everyone. Reese is crying. Like I saw in a movie <laughs> once that magic tears could heal. Yeah. Like tears have magic that could heal people, and I really think that's a thing. <laughs> and they make fun well, of. Can't him. blame them for trying. But. At uh, least. Yeah, but she's about to die, and she asks for the gift that Felix gave him. Yeah, which gave su- her. She yeah, would suppose know. only there's an option to eventually to get rid of the gift or to lose it somehow. So you can have Sasha die. Oh wow. Um, probably. Probably. I, uh, I, I would say that would happen in chapter four when you go through the metal uh, either detector. that or whenever you uh, peaked. Maybe you uh, uh, yeah. took it. Yeah. But uh, it's a watch, and it says on the back, time heals all wounds. And she's like, of course, leave it to him. Make to, a joke. You know, make a joke. But then it turns out the watch uh, has... a healing shield of some sort. A healing... Yeah. Um, which heals her, and then drops her... Like, it heals her and lifts her in the air, and then drops her, and it breaks her <laughs> arm. And she's like, why the fuck would he make a thing that would heal me, and then drop me and hurt me again? <laughs> And everyone's like, we don't care. We're just glad you're alive. Yeah, they go through this whole uh, Disney death thing as well, where, you know, she uh, 
takes this deep breath and then slowly lets it out and everybody thinks she's dead. No, I'm not dead yet. It's just deep breathing hurts less. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if that joke, a, a joke like that's made in dead, excuse me, Deadpool two. Uh, not sure. I'm wondering if they didn't borrow uh, some of that from here. Cause it would be like Ryan Reynolds to do that. Like, I feel like Ryan Reynolds probably uh, has played. Yeah. I romance. really need to see Deadpool too. Uh, but uh, it feels like that would have been the, you know, the sequence break of, you know, uh, where they would have had the death. It, uh, assuming what I read is true, of course. But it yeah. wouldn't shock me. You know, it's at the very end of the game, and especially with the ending. You know, uh, they could have uh, r- uh, wrote her out anyway. Anyway, you, uh, you have the ending scene, and uh, the, the, around here is where I crashed once they actually enter the vault. But uh, Reese uh, is talking to Fiona and then darts off, and Fiona chases after him, and they're running towards the open vault. Uh, to get all the goodies inside. Never mind all the guns outside. You're right. Yeah, everyone else is going through all the loot that the traveler dropped. Um, and then you, Reese is like, you know, well, I mean, he takes off, but you know, they have a conversation. Yeah, the and uh, her. they, uh, 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 Fiona's talking about how Sasha actually likes him, which I call him kind of bullshit on that one. At least in my game, I didn't do enough of the things to trigger her to hug uh, Reese over Vaughn. Yeah. Uh, so maybe it's kind of a uh, yeah, a, 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 a sort of a love triangle there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I never, I, I felt kind of weird about that whole thing because, like, she never showed any affection uh, towards Vaughn uh, at all during uh, my mom, playthrough. Uh, there was a little bit when they were uh, on the catwalk, uh, kind of flirting back and forth a little bit. Uh, but between uh, Vaughn Sasha, and. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was not in my game, but she still goes over and hugs Vaughn. But it's just like a, a friend hug, not yeah. like a... Oh, well, she also thought she was, uh, you yeah, know, he was dead, so, you yeah, maybe it could be that as well. Yeah. I, there was one choice that I didn't have where, you know, I didn't go Sasha's way, so uh, maybe that's what uh, triggered it. Because of, I, I do yeah. think that, you know, Reese can be hugged. Yeah. Uh, but... 91.1% uh, shipped Reese and uh, Sasha, so uh, uh, there's enough there, I guess, to you know, have some sort of attraction. I don't know. But I also, here's my uh, s- smallest percentage is uh, I had Reese say he wasn't sure about Sasha, and that's 16.2%. Uh, no, well, well, like I said, uh, outside of, you know, un- uh, uh, certain choices like Space Cowboy for scooters uh, less, but that's you know a four way choice that doesn't seem to be yeah. as important to me. But yeah, you know, for me it seemed like Reese wouldn't be sure about uh, Sasha, and that uh, that was seemed to be the unpopular choice. Yeah, I was I was very very sure of Sasha. Um, but yeah, no, she hugged Vaughn, but then afterwards, like I go over to talk mm-hmm. to her. And, like, she's very clearly, like, flirting back with me. And then Fiona walks up to me and she's like, what the hell is yeah, that about? Yeah, like, she, what's going on between the two yeah, of she, you? Uh, uh, and it does make me think that Fiona's a little jealous as well. Yeah. Yeah, I wondered if the two of them were going to have any sort of yeah, love for, connection. Yeah, for me, I was expecting, for, uh, but it yeah, for me, like I was it. expecting Vaughn and Sasha and uh, Reese and Fiona. Because it seemed like uh, those two were uh, working out uh, better, Vaughn and uh, Sasha. Yeah, no, I didn't have any sort of connection between Vaughn and Vaughn and Sasha in my game. Like, I I thought the hug was like purely like platonic. Like, oh my god, I thought you were dead. You're still alive. And like Reese does go to hug her, and it's like, I think it's Loaderbot's. Like, we all saw that. <laughs> but then afterwards, like she's flirting with me. Yeah, see, I didn't talk um, to Sasha immediately afterwards, so uh, I wanted to progress. So, and I figured, you know, Reese has uh, been hurt enough today. Or yeah. at least this minute. You know, I, yeah, right afterwards I, I talked to her and, and I had a scene where that, or there, there was a scene like where we flirted with each other and Fiona's like, what the hell are you two doing? And it's like, what is it? What do you think? What do you think we're doing? What does it look like we're doing? And Sasha just like gives her like an eye, like... Come on. 
Yeah, well, I, well, I still you know left the opportunity open because I said Reese wasn't sure, and yep, yeah, uh, he wanted to see where it went. That was that was his uh, yeah. response, which I think is probably the more mature response for him. Yeah, I was totally like, no, I've got a crush on her. I've I've been crushing on her this whole time. And then um, Fiona, like, I assume that this was just an option you can have, or maybe not. I don't know. But one of the the dialogue options that I had was Fiona said, you know, she likes you back too. Yeah, uh, I did say that. So okay. maybe that was uh, the ninety one percent. I don't know. Or, or no, the uh, for me it was actually backwards. Uh, uh, uh Fiona uh, was talking about uh, Sasha first, and never gave me the stink eye. Uh, at yeah. least in that sequence, no, she- uh, there was a portion uh during the in- uh, the musical intro of episode four where you know. Uh, Reese and uh, Sasha were making eyes at one another. And uh, uh, Fiona, you know, comes up and is looking at me and then Scooter. (laughs) Yeah, and then Scooter and she's like, oh, and she like backs away. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty funny. But uh, so anyways, Reese and and Fiona, they have that conversation. They go in the vault and they're having another conversation that's basically summing up the whole game and you have an opportunity to sort of narratively steer the characters in the way yeah. you want to go. And I had Fiona sort of lean into the, yeah, no, I'm a vault hunter. I'm good at yeah. this. this. Yeah, I did I that as well. With Reese agreeing with her. Oh, with Reese uh, and then wanting Reese, to steer Atlas to help people more than being warlords. Yeah, and I, I did the same thing for Reese as well. Um, Then they walk up together and the, their conversation mirrors the one from the end of chapter one, whenever they open the last uh, thing that had the, that had, uh, the uh, core of Gordas, which oh, yep. Gordas, uh, we and, didn't uh, mention that Gordas becomes small and cute again. Uh, she's able yeah. to uh, shrink and down she, into her, uh, as, well, I guess technically second form, if you don't count the core. Uh, so she's the yeah. little claptrap version again. And, and oh, and she comes over and she thanks mm-hmm. you guys for freeing her and, uh, I pointed out, like, it was actually Loderbot who put this whole thing together, yeah. and we helped, but he was definitely the one in charge. And she's like, oh, okay. And then she goes and she talks to him, and they, like, sort of one walk off together. That, and uh, I think it's Fiona. They're so cute goes, to me. They are just so cute that, That's together. why, yeah, I'm not sure of their relationship. If it's a, a, a parental relationship or a romantic one, particularly with how yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, they've been acting at the end. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, Fiona and Reese mirror their conversation and actions from the end of the first chapter. They open the giant treasure and chest. And it starts to uh, uh, do this, uh, weird, uh, glow and, uh, unfolding and then they disappear. Yeah. The screen sort of flashes and they're gone and then cut to credits. And that's the end of Tales from yeah. the Borderlands. Yeah. Complete cliffhanger. Uh, which do you think they will actually do a season two or uh, I'm, uh, I'm expecting this to tie into Borderlands three, especially with how uh, Scooter died. Yeah. I'd say this will tie into Borderlands three. I don't know if they'll do a season two. I mean, it, it indirectly ties into both um, Borderlands two and the pre-sequel. I mean, well, there's some combination of direct and indirect with characters showing up and events having happened um, but as far as I know, there's no, like, influence exerted between the games on each other. But it, it's more than just, like, a little bit of Easter egg lore yeah. stuff. Like, it leans very heavily on the pre-sequel and Borderlands 2 well, um, for some of its storytelling Well, they're stuff. basically uh, talking about how Scooter's going to be expanding a lot more, which, honestly, he already did. So, there's a, I always felt like they set up at the end of Borderlands 2 for almost an MMO where uh, the vaults were all throughout the universe. Yeah. Yeah, I I thought kind of the same thing too, but who knows? Who knows? I mean, that might be what Borderlands 3 is going to do, not necessarily an MMO, but you're going to go to other planets. Which honestly w- uh, won't hurt my feelings. That There's only so much they could do with Pandora. Yeah, same. Um, But yeah, I don't know if there's going to be a Tales from the Borderlands 2. I would guess not. Especially after this um, This was... Yeah. If, I mean, if there know, is a Tales from the Borderlands 2, so. it will probably be after Borderlands 3, tying uh, it into other games. Yeah. I do have to admit that 
uh, them putting uh, such uh, important uh, lore points. Uh, granted, I realize Borderlands lore outside of uh, people like us probably not that important, but people are going to be wondering what the hell happened to Scooter. Yeah, or Helios. So overall, because that's another thing is that oh. uh, Helios. Uh, I was a little shocked that they destroyed Helios in this, especially with uh, the DLC from uh, Borderlands Two. Made it sound like that was going to be a prime target for at least a portion of Warlands 3. Yeah. I mean, they might rebuild it and there might be another Helios station. Maybe the or next Helios. Like that. I mean, you maybe never know. Uh, there's a smaller version of Helios and it's a lowercase h. <laughs> that would be hilarious. And that would be perfectly fitting for Borderlands. And I'm totally uh, stealing that joke from the tick, by the way. <laughs> nice. Um,. So overall, yeah, um, I mean, we talked pretty overall before we got into the nitty gritty, but I, I like it. And after talking through it, I, f- I like it more than I did before we started talking. It hasn't bumped out. Um, Wolf I Among don't think us I, it's going to be very, t- it's going to be very tough to uh, bump uh, the Wolf Among Us. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. really looking forward to the second season of that. Yeah, same. But I do like it more than when I went into it. Especially hearing that there were actually some more than a couple of pretty yeah. big choice variations. I mean, not necessarily that they changed the overall story that much, but I mean, you know, certain characters could re, you know, come back, and certain characters went missing from the story earlier based on choices you made. There were two, a, a few very distinct and different. I mean, sequences. entire se- uh, the entire starting sequence of episode three. Yeah. Um, there was a huge, it sounds like a pretty big difference in tone with interactions with some of the characters based on the choices you made, like particularly Handsome Jack. Like, we were like best buds up until I was like, no, you can't kill me and stuff a, a robot skeleton in my body. But you were saying he was very, like, passive yeah. aggressive. Uh, and, yeah, he was uh, and passive sort of aggressive mean. and uh, also uh, towards uh, the end before the big betrayal, he actually was trying to get uh, some sympathy as well, uh, talking about how everybody screwed him over. Yeah. He actually apologized to me. He was like, you know, I, I went too far with you. Um, although I'm not sure if I if that was a real Probably apology not. or not, because like right afterwards he jabbed the thing into my head and downloaded himself back to my brain. But uh, yeah, uh, that, I, like I said, he, he was like apologizing I said, I think for the, things he had Yeah, done. for me, he was pissed uh, uh, in that sequence. The, uh, you know, him talking about everyone was uh, in the office beforehand. Uh, but yeah, yeah. It, this, I think this is probably the Telltale game that they've diverged a lot uh, or the most from uh, the various choices. Granted, I'm yeah. not sure it really has a lot of replay value. Yeah, because probably not. You just look up the differences online or on the wiki. Because and damn, those good. QTEs can get tiresome. Yeah. So, recommend? Uh, yes, but don't get the Twitch version. <laughs> yeah, I I also recommend it. So, uh, with that huge game club, yeah. out of the way, um, our next yeah, game club this is game gonna be fun. The month of July is going to be Fallout. New yeah, the Vegas. actually fun one. Yeah, it has been a long time since I've played this game. I beat it. Oh, 2010, 2011, something like that. Because it came out around, what, 2009, 2008, 2009? I think so. And I, and I beat it in 2010 or 2011. Yeah, I, but I've never played the DLC, and I've never played it modded. Because I played it way back on the Xbox Oh, 360. the worst version. I, I mean, you so, can't argue that one, mods. I think the PS3 was the worst version. But yeah, the Xbox 360. Well, unmodded. I mean, the game without mods, period. Not great. So, and uh, mods are on the table. I will say, yeah, probably shouldn't get anything absolutely insane. Uh, yeah, I'm going mostly for bug fixes and performance enhancements. Yeah, a little bit of quality um, of life, and then the nudity mod. Obviously, the nudity mods. I mean, it only makes sense for some of the areas, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, 2010. Yeah, uh, October. Uh, with but. the exception being Asia, which got in November 2010. Yeah, so um, 
It's been a long time since I played this game. Yeah, and this is going to be a big one to try to get through because we want to get the DLC as well. And let's take the DLC in order just in case we don't get through it all. Uh, So that will be uh, uh, Old World uh, Old World Blues is third. uh, The Lonesome Rose fourth. I'm blanking on the name of the first one, and I'm trying to look it up. (laughs) Yeah, it's okay. But yeah, we'll we'll do main game and then DLCs in their order, um, and just get through as much of it as we can. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I would say if we don't get through a good amount of it, we may not want to make this a double because this is a big yeah. one, and maybe even tackle it as two chunks with the main game being one uh, game club and the DLCs being its own. Yeah, we could do that. We'll see how we're doing. Maybe two or three weeks into July and make a call on that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think our plan should be try to get uh, up to the uh, close to the point of no return on the main story before hitting the DLC. Yeah, because there is a very obvious point of no return. Yeah. Um. So, there is one news topic we said we yeah. I mean, we kind of have to how relevant it was. (laughs) So, but given the time, let's uh, get yeah very quickly. yeah, essentially, swiftly. Telltale is a finally dumping their game, uh, their in-house game engine and going to Unity, which, hell, it's about time. I mean, Tales from the Borderland yeah. already showed it was ancient and not working very well. Yeah, I, I and mean, that was I mean, that's not even talking about uh, the out. issues I was having with crashes and uh, some of the choices not registering properly. You saw the animation bugs. Yeah, there's lots of buggy animations and oh, it's not it's not good. Anything that involves more than just standing still or walking around in any of like slowly walking around in any. I'm of not their even games sure is, slowly walking around because there was a couple times where you could obviously tell the end of one animation to the next because there was a you know, a quick hiccup. Yeah, yeah, I could see that particularly with the skags when they uh, ran. The skags... Uh, it looked like a poorly looping gif. Yeah, the skags were really bad about it. Fiona had a couple really bad ones whenever she was an NPC. Uh, and she would uh, start moving and there would be a... I, I wish I was recording it so I could go frame by frame, but uh, with how the game was running already, I didn't want to risk it. Uh, uh, I yeah. swear there was a couple times where she snapped to a... you know the standard uh, pose, you know, the test pose with arms out for like a frame and then went to the next animation. Yeah. I'm pretty sure she did that at least three or four times. I don't, I didn't remember seeing anything like that, but I mean, these games Buggy are as hell. horribly messy in that respect. So, you know, it could have been one of those things where that you, you know, you just happen to get the right, the right trigger for it. Yeah. And unity is, I think uh, probably a really good choice for this because Unity is uh, essentially game developer Velcro. No matter what you throw at it, it can stick. It's a very versatile engine. Uh, The downside of this is that Unity's gotten a very bad rap because it's also the engine that a lot of... Oh, what would be the politically correct term for this? Oh, yeah. Shitty developers use. Uh, There's a... Whenever I'm testing a game for the Sunday sampler, uh, there's this litmus test I use. If I see an unaltered Unity launcher, that's pretty much strike one for me. I mean, it's not always, but it's a tell, you know? Yeah, usually not a good sign. And I've seen the Unity launcher a lot of times uh, going through the various games I uh, do for the Sunday Sampler. More so than you'd probably expect. (laughs) Oh no, I've seen it plenty of times too and I'm not even doing what you're doing. It's like, hello Unity launcher, my old friend. Oh, it's time to go into the darkness again. (laughs) So I could definitely see Unity working for this. It really comes down to... Well, boy, this is going to sound uh, very uh, backward, a uh, backhanded compliment, but Telltale actually giving a shit to develop well enough, which Telltale has kind of been shipping things out as quickly as possible and making things rather hapdash. So, I, I, 
I think the first time they go to Unity for one of these games, it's going to be very, very, very rough. And you also have a problem with Unity not always being the most uh, compatible with some of the consoles. So it's going to be a definite wait and see, of course. I do think it's going to work out well on PC. It's the consoles, I think, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, I agree on that. Um, definitely on PC, better. I'm not 100% sure on consoles. I mean, there are a lot more games using Unity now. But, you know, I don't know enough about the process yeah, or I'm, anything I mean, to I'm not, be able to make any real judgment calls I mean, I'm that, not so. pretending to be a programmer at any stretch of the imagination. But uh, I do know enough that Unity is very versatile, but it requires a lot more effort than probably their in-house engine does. But once they yeah. set up everything, it, you know, Telltale loves to reuse things. So. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> hey, we killed uh, the, the in-house engine. Hooray. We did it. Or they did it. <laughs> they did the thing. Did you see that? They did the thing. They did the, indeed, they did do the thing. <laughs> All righty. Well, given how long we've been uh, going, what time it is, then? and the fact that I have to be up. Yeah. All right, so part of the episode where you go first? Indeed. If you want to see my stuff on the YouTubes, you can do so by searching for Gaming Psychologist on YouTube. You can see the podcast, um, whatever I've decided to try and work on at the time. And as soon as we get it put up, you will be able to see our Spin Tires series, which we started last week. Couldn't record this week because uh, uh, podcast first. particularly me had to... Yeah, podcast first. So we had. I was to actually done in time. Get ready so for I Game was Club. Getting some more testing done on various things. Yeah, but I had to uh, finish Tales from the Borderlands. Uh, but hopefully, uh, by the time you hear this, it'll be sooner, sooner, <laughs> sooner to go. Well, up. and that is how uh, time anyways, works. If they listen to this a lot later, it is sooner. That's true. Uh, and if you want to follow me on Twitter, where you can see me tweet about all sorts of things, you can do so by following me at JMA4707. If you want to see me occasionally, very rarely now, stream things on Twitch or use things using the Twitch Premiere system, which I use a lot more frequently to run live shows of the podcast and interact with the community, you can do so by going to twitch.tv slash jr4707. And if you want to be my friend on Steam, where I accept all friend requests from the lovely people in our podcast community, you can send me a friend request. My username is jarthur4707. And if you wish to let them know exactly what episode of the podcast you're coming from, the password for this week is kiddo. Nice. <laughs> well done. Uh, what about you, buddy? And that would be kiddo. Uh, for me, I'm still in kind of a low power standby mode. I uh, got Rim World. I'm going to record some more of that this week. Uh, I just got my last episode that I had pre-recorded. Uh, things are pretty stable there, which means things are about to fall, uh, you know, go to hell once again. <laughs> uh, had a death for the first time in ages, actually. Your uncle died and ends up, uh, you know, taking a direct mortar shell. Not good for one's health. Who knew, right? <laughs> And, and here I thought you need a lot of iron in your diet. Maybe that's too much. Uh, maybe it's too much of the explodey type. I mean, he was uh, he was pretty much just a red smear. <laughs> oh, but uh, outside of Rim World, going to try to get the Sunday sampler back up and running. I didn't have time to do it because of you know the game club episode, of course. And the other thing, I'm still working on that. I'm happy to do some more testing on that. I pretty much know what I want to do, but I was starting to get a little motion sick because, well, low field of view and, well, mouse smoothing. So I'm going to be trying that again uh, in the next day or so, and I think I may have fixed everything, but it's taken me about half a dungeon, uh, half a dozen different uh, Steam launch commands to get this thing to work where it's not making me sick and actually plays halfway decently. I mean, frame rate rise, it's fine most of the time outside of, you know, loading, but, you know, it's stream loading, so that's how that goes. Uh, but why the fuck does people uh, leave on, uh, 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 well, for one motion blur, narrow field of view, and 
Uh, just mass acceleration out the wazoo. All right, consoles. <laughs> uh, outside of that, spin tires should be starting up in the next couple of weeks. Well, I, it really depends on how we record on the second, really. And that's pretty much all of that. If you wish to see all of that, you can find me over at Gaming with Caffeine Rage on the YouTubes. Uh, see me tweet somewhat regularly on the Twitter, Gaming with CR. Latest tweet was me talking about how cringy it is. Racing Games uh, uses progression as your social media followers. Because that seems to be a thing now. Actually, it's been a thing for a while, but uh, it was a thing and something I tried out uh, for this week. Which I'll talk about next week. Oh, and, well, speaking of next week, well, we need to get there. And to get there, we need to get through the outro. You can email us, bglpodcast at gmail.com. With your letters, voicemails, gaming-related topics, or just tweet them, BGL Podcast, on the Twitters. Your lovely, lovely donations help support us. Patreon.com slash VGL Podcast is where you can do so. And it has helped pay for our Podbean account, podbean.com. Or sorry, VGLpodcast.podbean.com. And we're also on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever Jared shoved us. Hopefully it's not out of the traveler's butt. But that site also has our RSS feed if you're watching this on YouTube or Twitch. <clears throat> and also our show notes, which should be fairly short this week. Unlike our podcast. <laughs> I could hear Jared falling asleep, by the way. So I better say the intro and outro music is on the ground by Kevin McLeod. <laughs> you can find his work at incompudeck.com. Wake up. And as always, as his lovely music starts to roll across my voice. Come on, wake up, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Do you think they're going to a new universe for the next Borderlands? Uh, And and the Traveler uh, is taking us there? Or maybe we're just going to Disney World. Yo, uh, take on the House of Mouse. I would be okay if Borderlands went to <laughs> Disney World. Uh, hey, uh, it has to be more exciting than Kingdom Hearts 3. Huh? Huh? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> uh, his... We're going to go fuck them up, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> that got a bigger laugh than it should have. <laughs> <laughs>